In April, I believe Patman's gonna be fishing really well. A lot of people are gonna catch them. Waters, what, 67 degrees right now? Right now, they're in all phases. Flooded timber, flooded brush. Three baits, I think, will be a major player at this event is a Texas rig, swim jig slash chatterbait, and a crankbait. Spinnerbait, jig. Probably flipping, possibly some square billing, and some top water will play. Uh, if I could catch them with a long rod and a you know, flipping stick in my hand, that would be, that's my favorite way to do it. Probably a Carolina rig coming into play. I think that the weights will approximately be around 65, 68 pounds. I, I'm sure the potential is gonna be here for at least 20 a day. Somewhere around 70 pounds probably. 45 to 50 pounds to win. Not, I guess about 65, 67 pounds. 65 to 67 to win. Maybe 62. I mean, you know, you got Michael Yoder that's from here. He's probably going to be a hard one to beat. Uh, he knows every inch of it, I'm sure. So uh, uh, he'll probably be the guy everybody's gunning for. It wouldn't surprise me if there was one to three fish over nine pounds. A couple, if not more, over nine pounders that are weighed in. Hello friends and neighbors and welcome back to the National Professional Fishing League and our second event of the season here from the city of Texarkana, Texas in beautiful Wright-Patman Lake. I'm Luke Duncan and I'm joined today by fishing legend David Dudley and bass fishing funny man Fat Cat Newton out on the water to bring you several hours of live coverage of our NPFL pros out there on Wright-Patman snatching up some big bass Dudley and so far... Like we saw in the intro piece, those sevens, eights, and nines have eluded our guys, but Wright Patman kicking out some serious quality so far. Yeah, we, me and you have traveled all over the country, and to see the weights that have been put out at this lake has, you, if you can look up underneath my arms right now, I got goosebumps <laughs> talking about how good this lake is. But yeah, they these anglers have been throwing a curveball. If you look at the conditions they had in practice, high waters flooded bushes way into the back we heard some people talking about going back 200 yards behind the bush lines to we're here at the final day of the event the water has been dropping and a lot of these fish have been coming out and me and you have been talking about will this tournament be one flipping or will it be one with moving baits and Luke, you saw what transpired yesterday. We saw those swim jiggers, the chatter bait, the moving baits, the spinner baits come into play. I'm going to have to say that you're going to owe me a fried to green tomato <laughs> dinner by the end of this, this round today. I still say moving baits are going to win it, but I know you're going to, with the flippers. Well, just because of Keith Carson, and I, I mean, I, I'm a fair weather fan, a bandwagon guy, if you will, and Keith Carson has dominated this thing flipping, so I'm going to go with Keith. Now, he did catch a couple nice fish on a chatterbait, but you are right. The swim jig guys made a huge, huge push yesterday, fishing fast, covering a lot of water, and that's, that's a discussion that you and I have had as well. The guy that locks his power poles down, picks slow areas apart, Will that prevail or the guy that's just running and gunning? And so far, Keith on top running and gunning. We saw that from Jesse Millsaps yesterday who made a huge surge into second place. David Gaston, one of our top five anglers from Lake Eufaula, made a huge push yesterday on the moving deal. We're going to see. It's going to be interesting. One thing that was really fun to watch, even though the weather got a little dicey, was our drive through weigh-in yesterday here at the Texarkana Convention Center. Lots of big bass came across the stage, and we want to share that with you in case you missed it right now. Nick Provodazak, there's the boom. 
1814, 1814. From Jasper, Georgia, Jesse Millsap. There's the move. 23 pounds, four ounces right there. Your new leader, Jesse Millsap. Cody's got five in the bag today. 20 pounds, five ounces right there. Just gonna put you just out of first place. Put your hands together, folks, right there. Josh hammered it up on day one. 19 pounds, two ounces, two day total of 40, 12. A big one on the right path then. Your day one leader. Put your hands together for Keith Carson. He's got five in the bag today. 25 pounds on day one. I'm looking for 1702 to take the lead. 22 pounds, four ounces. Your new leader at 47 pounds, four ounces. Dudley, I'm going to have to call Keith Carson the mailman because it doesn't matter the conditions, man. Rain, sleet, snow, or hail, he's catching them this week here at Wright Patman, and it's been so awesome to, to be in the boat with him. We're going to get to see a lot more of him on Showdown Saturday, but just the most humble guy and giving the goods on live. Yes, he did. I I got speechless listening to him yesterday. And that's that, rare. I'd like yeah, to cut you off and say that, that's rare, doesn't it? That was. I got <laughs> speechless listening to him. He gave us some goods. And a lot of these anglers just – I learned a lot yesterday just by watching. But what is so intriguing about being able to watch live, bring the game to uh, to you, the audience. And we get to watch a lot of this on behind the screen. But when you bring the game to you and you watch the whole game for three days play out – how many times, Luke, have we been asked, well, what do you do in this condition? What do you do in this condition? Well, we got fallen water. We got um, flooded bushes. Now the bushes don't have much on it. You got spawners that are barely have any water on their back. You got some fish that have already spawned. You're watching it all unplay right before your eyes. And just as many years as I've been in this tour, in this business, fishing for 27 years, I still learn so much right. by watching the live. So today... I'm still going to say yes. There's a lot of conditions that could play in the hands of the move bait, moving people who move in movie baits. That means bladed baits. We saw our first bite yesterday with what? The frog. frog that's right. I think some top water is going to come in. But I, today, I think with that water getting so low, those fish are going to feel a little uneasy. And the moving baits are going to start venturing out. They can't hold t quite tight to cover. And I think we're going to see some mega bags here today. Well, one thing's for sure. When you're heading out leading a tournament, you might be a little uneasy like those fish. But our man Fat Cat Newton caught up with Keith Carson just to see how he's feeling on Showdown Saturday. All right, folks. Here we are, day three of the National Professional Fishing League Tournament here on Wright Patton in Lake Texarkana, Texas, presented by Progressive. We're with our tournament leader. Keith Carson has led day one, day two. He's cold straight whacking him. Keith, you're leading this thing pretty good going to day three, the final day. Are you going to be able to keep on to hold on to the lead? Are you going to go out there and just cold straight whack him again today? What are you going to do? How do you expect to win this bad boy? Man, you know, last night we had a lot of rain. I woke up at 2 a.m. There was hail hitting the side of the house. It sounded like somebody was throwing rocks at the house. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to muddy the water up. I think the weights are going to drop. I don't think it's going to take as much um, to win. So, you know, I had 25 day one, 22 day two. You know, if I could catch 18 a day, I would be satisfied with that. If, if it uh, allows me to win, I do. If not, then, hey, you know, congratulations to the next guy. But uh, that's my goal is 18 today. Are you going to catch them the same way you've been catching them, you think? I'm going to try to catch them the same way, but I'm going to have to completely change areas because we're supposed to have strong winds today, and that's heading directly into the bank that I've been fishing. All right, brother. I appreciate you, man. The best of luck to you, my friend. We'll see you at the weigh-in. All, right, All right, folks. That's a wrap for here. Keith Cross is going to go out there and cool straight whack them. Stay tuned for the rest of the day. We're going to be chasing these guys up and down, trying to bring you the best coverage we can, man. It's going to be wild. Totally different conditions with that big storm coming in last night. Water's going to be dirty. Water's going to be high. Water's coming in. Water's going out. It's going to be wild. So tune in. Stay with us. And we gone. <laughs> you know, one thing that you pick up on listening to Keith, and we've been fortunate enough to see this on the last two days of MPFL Live, changing, changing, changing. He is willing to abandon everything. Day one, totally scrapped his practice and goes and catches 25 pounds, fishing 
by the seat of his pants. Instinct, that's the biggest thing that we've heard Keith say yesterday. Oh, there's some guys in my area where I caught 25 pounds. Goes and catches 22 in a totally different area of the lake. So today he's like, yeah, the wind may blow onto my spot. I'm going to go check out some new water. Can he get it done? I, I, he's a Even though he's a fairly young angler, he's a very seasoned angler. So I can't – I will not bet against Keith whatsoever. But you've heard us talk about one of the best things you can do as an angler is to make the adjustments on the fly. When you're in the spring time of the year, fish are always in the move. And I'm talking hour by hour. And we talked about yesterday some anglers were choosing to go back over their water. Right, And if you are skilled in a certain technique, you, some of the anglers that went to different areas, they knew it wasn't going to replenish, and they knew they milked that area for its best value. So listening to Keith say, hey, I'm scrapping. That wind's going to be pounding in on my bank. I'm going to move, go to a different area. I guarantee you we're going to see Keith do some things today. We haven't seen Keith do the whole tournament. He's he he will be on top of the game. If I had to bet, Keith is probably going to throw the swim jig into his game today, and we really haven't seen him throw a swim jig. Now we've seen him throw a bladed bait, but today the anglers that can stay on top keep moving and fishing fresh fish are the ones that are going to come with the giant bags that this lake is known for. Absolutely, and and I just got to say, I hope. With all I've got that today, we get to see that nine-pound, four-ounce bet that we made. I hope I get to see that big nine-pounder come across for the Big Bite Challenge, Big Bass. And we heard Keith say it on day one. This lake's got eights, nines, tens. We've heard guys say elevens. Hopefully, today on MPFL Live, we'll get to see that. We've had the guys out on the water, of course, before we went live. We're going to take a look back, a little highlight package. Some of the catching that's been going on this morning on Wright Patman here in the city of Texarkana, Texas. Oof. One of the infamous locals here at Wright Patman that we've seen a lot of this week that I do not want to meet at the drive through William. Absolutely not. Now Dudley, what happens when you I had a man throw your you know your prize possession lure in that Good bush? One. You just Good give one. it to him. Stay on, yep. baby. Stay on. Right here. Keith Carson. No surprise here. Unbelievable. Keith Carson. Giant you know, lake. that's the first fish Number I've two. seen him catch, catch out of a laydown. Okay. Not a giant, but. Making changes. Keith looks like he's sitting on three already unofficially. Over to Brandon Perkins, Tennessee hey. angler. Who we saw swimming that white crawl a lot yesterday. Looks like he picked up where he left off. And just a beautiful start to showdown Saturday right there. Want to thank Progressive, the presenting sponsor of the National Professional Fishing League here at Wright Patman, and for bringing us those highlights. Different conditions again. You've talked about it. These guys have been throwing a curveball from pre-practice you know a lot of these guys came out this was their first time ever seeing this place a few weeks ago before the cutoff then the official practice weather was cold we've had so many different conditions and now that water's just steadily falling but last night you throw two inches of rain on top of that and storms will be an interesting showdown saturday to say the least dudley it will be i i'm excited to watch the adjustments being made it's it, you you have the guys fighting for the check right they're fighting for that 36 place position and of course on the unofficial leaderboard we're able to watch that battle go on but with 10 live cameras we're able to bat, watch the battle go on watch and see what they do to come chasing keith in this top 10 uh final round day so it's uh it's going to be exciting. And one thing's for sure, they're all eyeing this right here behind mm -hmm. us, this beautiful trophy, a $50,000 payday awaiting the guy that's in the top spot at the end of the day, $9,000 all the way down to 36th place today. So really two tournaments going on. These guys out there trying to catch bass, as Fat Cat Newton would say, for fat cash so we're going to enjoy every single second of it today and one thing is for sure you mentioned 10 cameras the only way that we get to do that Dudley is 
by having amazing sponsors right. like we do. We're going to take a look at those right now. We'll be back very soon with more MPFL Live from Wright Patman. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. Mm. Yeah, I doubt that exists. It's a bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFL. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started. And now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free, so you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website, you can buy a can for a dollar to try it. FullyLoadedChew.com. Check it out. Welcome back to NPFL Live. Got our quad box up, our first look. At some of our anglers live this morning. Our leader, Keith Carson. Jesse Millsaps in second. Nick Provanzak and David Gaston, who so. finished second. At Lake well, Ufala, made a huge a surge decision. yesterday into all, our top five. All information. Everything's changed. It's changing for me. It's changing for my competitors. And uh, yeah, I just gotta keep keep taking it in and make decisions. Let's see. Find something out of the wind up here. Here, Keith talking about those changing conditions. It's going to be the story of the day. It's been the story of the week so far, Dudley. It is. We got to talk a little bit about David Gadsden. That was a huge <laughs> surge yesterday. Yes. And if you know anything about David Gaston, we watched him at Ufala take a swim jig and just dominate with that thing. I, I'm going to have to guess that he's throwing a swim jig at this event we haven't had a camera on him all week but he is going to be a big threat i feel and he had one of those dreaded dead fish penalties yesterday one pound Dang, so he I actually weighed 23 that. pounds had a pound more um but ended up officially with a little over 22 pounds so an incredible stringer talked to david a little bit last night and david never lacks confidence when they're biting a swim jig and he was smiling ear to ear at the drive through way in yesterday, I can tell you that. And it looks like he's picking up where he left off, throwing the swim jig this morning. And one thing you'll notice with these guys that are swimming a jig is how fast they're swimming it. That Alabama shake we talk about, keeping it up high in the column. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the reasons the swim jig dominates this time of year a, a lot, you're, you're catching, you know, <clears throat> potentially fry garters and typically fry are going to be towards the surface you're catching fry garters and you're catching cruisers it's just a way to target a couple different uh fish in a different uh you know time of the year in a different mo mood that they're in so 
Will a swim jig catch a spawner, though, as well? Do you think like that I, frog catching those spawners outside of that? Is that a possibility? You can, and I think some of the bites that you do get on a swim jig definitely are spawners, but not as many. Spawners, typically you got to let something soak or get in that, you know, danger zone of the, the bed that they're in. So you can catch some very aggressive spawners, but the overall uh, – Numbers of bite that you get on, I'm going to have to say post spawn okay. Okay. and spawn uh, fry going. guard, any, anything in the post position. It says how dirty the water is. You know, you just can't see it. Keith Carson. So I, I got to keep doing big hops. I believe that one's going to be number hops. four for Keith in the yeah, quad box the right side, there. Maybe the lead it. All right, 14 three quarters. Not a giant, but it's n number four. That's That's all of our four. anglers hoping for a fully loaded live well. Dudley? I think the load is happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Keith has not been very light in the live well. Number four there for Keith, one shy of a limit. Of course, all of our anglers fighting to bring their best five bass right, let's go ahead and update the to the Texarkana I Convention. I think I forgot to update the, uh, update the third one, too. So those are both pretty small. Yeah, you did, Keith. We'll say they're like we missed the Way, in, way Live app ounces. update, buddy. These guys know I'm a stickler for that, Dudley. Yes. Okay. Did you gave them the speech? To All right, just caught number meeting. four, guys. Is a small one. Um, you know, you know, got. I'm glad to be catching some, but but it's 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 difficult. Uh, so, um, you know, just gonna keep keep flipping, keep going with it, and uh, seeing see if we can pick up a big one. Try try to make number five a five pounder. If anybody on our top ten camera oh. today can make number five a five pounder, I think it would be Keith. Yeah, <laughs> we've we've seen a lot of five pounders from him this week. Yeah, Absolutely. We start with a new crawl here. This one's shot. Sticking with that oh, same program, okay. flipping the crawl. I put haven't seen him with the chatterbait yet this night. morning. Flipping with fifty pound uh, X five. That's a good one. Ooh, man, got a good one on the first try. How about that? That fish was exactly He's talking about sometimes the little be. swimming legs on crawls right on aren't the point exactly able to swim. <laughs> because right, of how they're right the outside the mud line. I don't know if you can see with the camera, but if you look on the point, like it's there's a strong mud line coming around. And uh, I think a lot of those fish that maybe were out on that point, maybe they're just coming around this corner a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's a book that'll replenish. I could hit that again in an hour and catch another one. Confidence. Today I'm going to do a lot of that. But showdown my Saturday. As well as making sure that I have meaning I don't want to let my competitors get at me and start flipping bushes a guy go through a pocket and then minutes later maybe he left you know I have no idea that he was even through here and then I wonder why didn't I get a bite and uh, it may not necessarily be that I'm making the wrong fishing decision it just may be um, that I'm in a in a bad rotation and guys are fishing ahead of me and that's happened to me both days one and two and today I'm gonna try try not to let that happen Although I did catch some five pounders behind a guy yesterday, so. so who knows? Dudley Keith is uh, he's talking us through every wow. decision he's I'm just making. Moving, into this, moving into this pocket. Uh, flipping some bushes and just keep flipping this one ounce, keep slinging it around, doing big hops, trying to run it into the side of one. That is, it, I, I'd never would use, that's what's amazing about this game. <clears throat> I would think looking in a foot of water a one Couple ounce would fall too fast to or well that's kind of, that's i don't think i'm going to need as much. that's the general consensus right that's I the magazine talk this, some sort of pressure in that something that's going to affect them 
lets no moss grow on it either. Brings it back. Totally a reaction bite. And they've been reacting for two days here at Wright Patman <laughs> to Keith Carson and his crawl. Right One now, ounce weight for those of you just joining it's us. an alleyway. It connects Big Creek to the main lake. And um, out there, these fish should definitely, you know, as an alleyway, they should be coming through, you know, for, for whatever reason. Um, whether it be to come in, whether it be to come into Big Creek to spawn or what, I'm just going to try to intercept one here. One, you know, comes through and just stops on one of these bushes. I haven't fished this spot yet in the whole tournament. I should. Get Real shallow though. Yeah, I'm kicking up a lot of mud there. My motor stuck. Yesterday, Keith said was, when he kicked up mud was when he was catching them. So <laughs> um, I'm going to be keying in on side points. Anything that might have another end. Two or six inches, you know, whatever got so they can so they can live on it. These fish want to be in this place. And so with it being this shallow. One thing, one thing he laid mentioned to, you can hear the his thought process a little bit was. He is fishing. He said he said two things. Okay, he said, I can go back to that one particular piece of cover, and I will catch another one there. Now, then he laid mentioned to, hey. This is a travel area going from this place to this place. What he means by that is oh, it's oh, interesting. Right? Down hole in your side, you okay? My gosh, I just hit Rick with a one ounce. Oh man, I hit myself oh, no, in the Rick. face with the one ounce uh, like two or three months ago. Busted my glasses. And I'm lucky I didn't go blind in one eye. Especially with how much I love sight fishing. Well, well, I think we need to check on Rick then, Keith, if you almost yeah. blinded yourself. Those cameras aren't free, buddy. You better be careful. I would hate to see a guy lose a $50,000 check to pay for one of Mr. Brad Fuller's cameras out here. <laughs> this is to get... To get back to what he was saying, he laid mention to two hints, and his eyes is focused on migratory routes, places that they're going to be coming and going. If he's in the back of a cove or in a particular place, he's fishing for fish in a particular stage. What he's saying is, I'm I'm focused on funnel areas, uh, you know, place migratory routes. That's why he keyed in and said, look, that piece of cover, yes, sir. I'm going to catch another one on it. He knew that that was not a spawner, but he knew that was a post spawner that was a, using that particular hard piece of cover. His thought process of watching this game unfold before our eyes has been immaculate. Going from the first day, right catching spawners. I could feel my to, weight sink a little bit further. Not much, but enough to make a difference. And one thing that, that Keith 
has been hitting on a lot, and a lot of our guys have the water levels. You know, been really, really, really key this week to reading what's going on and making adjustments, like we've seen Keith. So we're going to send it out on the water to our man, the big cat, Fat Cat Newton, to get an update on what is actually going on out there, right, Pat? And Dudley, we sit in here and run our mouth, but the big cat is out there on the water. Going to go check in with him right now. Hey, the official world wood shaking. Fat Cat Newton coming at you, man. Showdown Saturday. Texarkana, Texas, Wright Patman Lake, National Professional Fishing League, stop number two, day number three, presented by Progressive. We made a run this morning, the longest run we've made all week. We run a 30 minute run up here to Highway 8 Bridge. Above the bridge, that's where they're going up the river. We got guys, Coastray, whacking them up there. It's a different body of water up here. It really is. Bunch of rain overnight yesterday. It was just, it was pouring cats and dogs. I was thinking, man, how is it going to affect Wright Patman? Showed up this morning. We made that run. Water clarity is the same. But to be honest, it really couldn't get any muddier. It was already stained up. The water level, even though we had all that rain, the water level is still right about the same. If not, this probably went down a little bit. I think they're still drawing water. So with that being said, th these dudes are still making these runs and Thankfully, we were Shane Smith because he brought something up about that water still dropping. It's getting sketchier. The fish are changing a little bit, but even your navigation could change. Somewhere you fished two days ago, you may not be able to fish with that water level still dropping, even though it did rain. You would think, well, you got all that rain, the water level would go up. We talked to Dalton, the Corps of Engineers, before the tournament started. He said if it rains on right Patman, it won't affect the water level. But if it rains north of Patman, that water coming down is what fluctuates right Patman. So... Conditions really haven't changed much yesterday and today, other than the wind just doing a 180. It's blowing about 15 miles out of the north northwest compared to south southeast yesterday. I don't know if that's going to play because everybody I talk to, Bobby's doing this and Terrence said this is the only way they're biting. Then I talked to somebody else, they're saying the exact opposite. Like yesterday, Paul Browning said he's only getting bites where there's no wind, and then Jesse Millsap said he needs wind. So. We're going to see how it plays out. We're waiting on Josh Ray. we got our eyes open. He should be coming through, bebopping and flip-flopping to see what he's going to put in the boat in that fully loaded live well. So we're going to get back on the water. Back to you boys in the studio, man. The big cat bringing us the goods right there out on the water. And, Dudley, do you think that uh, Fat Cat drinks a lot of Red Bulls in the morning or is it just one? I don't know. I, he's just always – that's a good one. Bringing the thunder. I, I think he – I talked about his birth when he was born, and he said, when I came out my mama's womb, I had a Red Bull in my hand. So, <laughs> so I think I it's kind of natural that's with the him. Deal. I think that's the deal. You know, something else I want to point out with Fat Cat, always brings up Bobby and Terrence. I can never, ever find them on the uh, standing sheet on our Way Live app. I can never find Bobby and Terrence, and he's always covering Bobby and Terrence. Mm. So I, I am uh, – I'm hearing, Dudley, we're getting a little bit of Fat Cat Cam bonus coverage. We're fixing to jump from Keith Carson over to the Fat Cat Cam and see who he has ran into now. Looks like our local favorite right here, Michael Yoder, coming to the event. Michael knows this body of water better than anyone but he's really uh he's having a solid event Dudley but not the event he wanted you and I talked to him yesterday to drive through way in and really just not happy that he can't be up there chasing that trophy today you know yes he's not in the top 10 after day two but Luke we gotta assume you're not gonna give him three days on your home body of water and not be able to come back. And could he win it? Eh, I don't think so. Not that he's not skilled enough to win the tournament, but I think a uh, little bit of a hiccup on day one and, you know, has him in a position where he's fighting for good angler of the year points right now. And I think he's going to come back and, you know, strong and get as many angler of the year points as he can. Yeah, you know, I'd like to point out that a hiccup on Wright Patman was having 18 pounds, 12 ounces on day one. <laughs> but he ex and 17 pounds yesterday, 35 pounds for two days. Incredible catch, but 
in this for, event for him. for him here that's, that's a hiccup that's a hiccup for him yes very respected <laughs> yeah. that, it probably came across a little wrong but i'm glad you explained to that no, I mean, no so it's just it's a testament to how good the lake's been yes and getting our first look at jay I willie starting my main area where i started the last two days i i came up and fished some new water yesterday and ended up catching two four pounders and a three pounder and I didn't know how much pressure I was getting, so I decided to start there this morning, hoping to hoping to get you know just a couple bites, and uh, didn't work out. We got two small ones um, right at 14 inches in the boat right now, but you know I think this post frontal conditions is is making it a little bit tough, or a little bit tough for me anyhow. And you know we're just gonna keep grinding all day, and and we're gonna run into them at some point. You know it seems it seems like when they when you get a bite, there's there's a few bites in that area. Um, last couple of days I've I caught them you know right around between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning and then a little lull and then between like 1 and 3 I can I can get some more bites so we got all kinds of time today we're just gonna keep keep after it and uh, hopefully we can get a few a few big bites here you know I I actually haven't thrown a spinner bait all week I threw it in practice a couple times I got a couple good bites in practice on it but um, you know, with this this wind blowing now and and this water it seems a little bit dirtier than it than it was with all that rain we got last night. I picked up this uh, spinner bait and I actually caught one on a chatter bait this morning and one on a spinner bait. Haven't caught any flipping and flipping's been kind of my main deal. But we're gonna go back to where I started the last couple days here in just a few minutes and uh, really work that area over. You know, the first day I thought it I thought I burned it all up, but. I, uh, I went back in there in the afternoon, caught a few fish, and then started there yesterday. It's about a two or three hundred yard stretch, and I spent four hours on it yesterday, just flipping every little piece of wood there, and and I turn around and hit it again, and you know, every time I went up and down it, I caught a fish. So that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully, we can go over there, get a limit, and then we can kind of run around, maybe go run some new water, and try to get a couple of big bites. Joel from Minnesota, former FLW Tour angler, Forest Wood Cup qualifier, and he, a back-to-back -back co angler champion on the amateur side of the FLW Tour one year, one back-to-back -back events, which is a a rare feat in competition. Laid mention, need I mention Luke? He said flipping has been his main deal, and he now is talking spinner bait, bling bling blades, bladed baits. I'm just saying, Luke Duncan. It's starting to happen. <laughs> I think I see that fried green tomato plant <laughs> sitting there fried up in front of me. Now, wait a second. I never disagreed that the moving baits weren't going to play. <laughs> We need to write down what our bets are. We really are. do. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we bet it so just many all, It doesn't matter. We all, we end up eating good either way. Because <laughs> last right. night we did share a plate of fried green tomatoes. <laughs> That's right. Here at uh, Ironwood Restaurant, in the city of Texas. Spinner Spinnerbait I'm throwing here is it's actually a three-quarter ounce right. spinnerbait. I I like that heavier heavier spinnerbait because I feel like I can control it so good. I, I can. Uh, I can burn it and keep it up higher. If I need to have it go a little bit lower, it's a lot easier to to get it down in the water column with that heavy weight on it. So it's kind of what I've been been throwing is just three quarter ounce and today anyhow, and it's got one in the box with it. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of pick it up and throw it throw it if we want to just cover some water and try to figure out where there's a bite or two and. I'm throwing it on this uh, Shimano X Pride. It's actually a seven foot, seven inch heavy rod um, with a Shimano Curado. And I got a slow gear ratio reel. It's a 6.2 to one gear ratio reel. So, you know, I can I can still get that spinner bait and burn it if I need to with this reel, but I can really slow it down if I need to too, if I get in a little bit, a little bit deeper water, so. Joel with one in the box start of the day in the 11th, but let's take a look at take the a guy few more casts here and who's been at the top of the heap all down. week. We're going to run over across we'll the lake over to, uh, to our man area. Keith Carson. Hopefully there's no boats over there. 
hasn't been getting a lot of pressure. There's been a few boats in and out when I've started there in the mornings, but you know, it seems like with how methodical and, and how much I'm picking those, those uh, bushes apart, you know, there might be some guys coming in there and catching a few, <clears throat> a few fish in there, but you know, I think, um, I think I'm catching a lot of fish just by slowing down and just really taking my time in there and, and picking it apart real, real methodical. So that's the confidence. I'm throwing something a little bit different. Yesterday I went to, uh, I went to a craw tube actually and put a rattle in it. You know, this water is pretty dirty. It's only an inch or two of visibility. And with that rattle inside that craw tube, you know, I'm just sitting there kind of shaking my rod tip. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's subtle, but it's giving those fish, you know, the opportunity to find that bay with that little bit of rattle in there. And I don't know if it's actually helping, but I, you know, it seems to be getting, getting a few bites from me and a few better bites and definitely did yesterday. So. Joel winding the spinnerbait around. Now we're getting a look, another look at Keith Carson, our leader. Been leading this thing wire to wire. Go on. Keith hooked up. It's a, it's, it's not even a, not even a keeper. That close yeah. combat fishing coming into play right there, Dudley. Well, flipping are, are these fantastic, these fantastic. Wow, I'm going to have to reach this, aren't I? Oh, geez. Yeah, I think he's still there. He's got me down in the roots. We lost. Let me see if I can. A lot of people would be freaking out about right now, wouldn't it? He's, <laughs> he's just calm. Yeah, he's still on it, but I don't think he's a keeper. Oh he can't gosh. even see him. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, little buddy. That, that one ounce weighs more before. than him. <laughs> Not what we're looking for. Might be a keeper, though. Little guy today. Yeah, I'd say that's going to meet our 14-inch minimum. Dudley's going to be close. No. This What's the bet? Out of his mouth. Uh, Double order of fried green yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, they turned him that way. That's definitely not a 14. All right. I just hope he wrote, proves us wrong. I just wrote that down. I want another. Okay. Oh. Got some bonus action here. The Fat Cat Cam over to Chance Woodard. We had a big event down at Ufala. Now our inaugural event. A lot different day out there today than we had that weather looming all day yesterday, Dudley. Today the birds are singing, the sun's out. Fat Cat's going to get a sunburn out there like he's on spring break. Common theme this week, Dudley, all the trolling motors jacked all the way up. <laughs> Super skinny water. You're sitting here telling us this is not his juice. It's only when he's up in the river above the bridge highway. A lot of talk about islands this week. Islands are definitely a migratory route in any lake you go to in the country. You know, they, they're typically out towards the main channel. 
since you hit one on the bed, you want to come back to it. Mark it, but he's just sitting here flicking the tube, hitting these willows. Talked about the water condition not being an issue. The front coming That's in not being an issue. We were saying fishing pressure is more of an issue. Basically, we've seen him set hook. He's tried to jam steel like three or four times. He said the fish are just eating it weird. And he said when a big one climbs on, he likes them up here. He fish lake for a lot of experience on lake four, catching them big ones. He said the fish here in Wright Patton, especially up here in this river system, are full grown. They got shoulders. He said he had one yesterday right at the boat, almost got his hands on it. Come on, buddy. Said he thinks it might have something to do with that braid. He said these fish are wore out, they're getting beat up, they're spawning. And he says when he's just he's so close quarters, and when he's jamming steel with that heavy rod and that braid, he thinks that could almost be counterproductive, ripping it out of their mouth. But he said they're sore mouth. They got their, their lips right now because they're getting beat up for the past week. That's some of the best anglers in the game. Right now, we're about to tie on a Vienna sausage, I think. I don't know if it should be barbecue or regular. Uh, it's a tube. I was thinking what I would be doing. You're yeah, watching Flip in there right now. It's probably going to catch about eight or nine pounds. All right, Chance Woodard unofficially in 43, 43rd place <laughs> there, 43. <laughs> I think I heard Fat Cat mention barbecue, and I started drifting to uh, lunch already, Dudley. But you know what p helps us pay for lunch? The sponsors pay the bills because they cater us, man. We got a lunch behind the stage. You won't even believe it here at the MPFL Live. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more MPFL Live and Fat Cat whispering. You're good. Little bonus coverage here, guys. Little bonus coverage right now. One thing, Dudley, we, we talk about it. You and I are live addicts, but we're also live rookies yes. in production. And if anything can happen, it will happen on live. So mm -hmm. we're going to get a, another look here at Chance and – he, he's one of the power pullers we've been talking about. Yes. He hasn't definitely. moved 10 feet in this whole uh, last 10 minutes, really. Listening to Fat Cat talk us through this. I, I do. I like to give the big cat a hard time. And if, and if this doesn't work out for him, CBS will hire him for the Masters next year. He's oh, just got his got golf got voice down. He doesn't want to disturb the guys. Just saw a chance. And during the spawn of the year, Luke, power pulling down like this, you you have to have confidence in the area you're at because if you're lacking confidence, you're not going to fish that cover the way you should fish it with confidence. So that. He said when he's fishing the shallow stuff in close quarters. He hasn't turned off because he doesn't want to pink him, making me noise. He's going to stealth. I asked him what he needs to you know, actually what he wants to have to make that check line. He can still go out here and catch a 30 pound sack. If anybody's capable of doing that, it's a chance for him. But he was like, you know, going into day three, I was just thinking, you know, what do I need to make that check? All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back here at Wright Patman with more NPFL Live very soon. The National Professional Fishing League brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFO. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit started and quit and started and now i found a product where i don't have to quit let me introduce you to fully loaded this product is food grade quality 
but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco-free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. Fullyloadedchew.com, check it out. Hey there, Fishing World, what's shaking? Fat Cat Newton coming at you from Texarkana, Texas, here for stop number two of the National Professional Fishing League, fishing right in Patman Lake. If you guys come here to fish, make sure you stop by Mio Mayo's Cajun Cuisine. We just rolled out of there with our guts tight. Had that black and catfish, some collard greens, them boudin balls, all that good, good Cajun cooking, baby. Y'all in town, make sure you stop by Mio Mayo's and tell them Fat Cat sent you, okay? <laughs> What is the the favorite here? What does everybody come here for? A lot of guys like the catfish and fish can. Oh yeah? It's dirty rice with the filet on top and with the SFA on top of that. Okay, so that's that's one of y'all's number ones? That's a big favorite. Alright, let us try that, the, the catfish. Do you want a lunch special or the dinner side portion? Uh, I mean, probably the dinner. <laughs> Thank you. Have mercy. We gonna dig in or what, Bobby? Look at this boy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, son. I don't know what a lot of this stuff is, but this right here is corn with bacon in it. I'm all about that life. Collard greens, hush puppies, catfish, and looks like real chunky gravy. Ah, that's music to my nose. <laughs> Blackened catfish. <laughs> Golly. It's hard to chew it because I'm smiling so much because it tastes so good. Flavor too, boy. Got a little kick on the back end. Mio Mayo's. Texarkana. Cold straight legit. You feel like you're in Louisiana. You feel like you're down there in a bayou. <laughs> John Sokup, Sepulpa, Oklahoma. The strategy in Lake Eufaula was very simple. I was looking for brush piles down lake, looking for bigger fish, pre-spawn and post-spawn that were staging up in those brush piles. Of course, I was you know, blessed with a couple big fish on day one and another real big one on day two, so I had over 20 on the first two days. So the third day, limping in with 13 pounds still got me the win, so we had 53 pounds total. So everybody likes talking about the $50,000. Obviously, you know, I got bills to pay too, like everybody else in life, but the trophy meant more than anything. It's gonna go down in history and to have my name right there, that's amazing. Wright Patman, event number two, National Professional Fishing League. The event is gonna be a spawn fest. Uh, whether it's pre-spawn, spawn, or a little bit of post-spawn, uh, the challenge is gonna be how to catch them in the bushes, how to catch them on shore, and if somebody can figure something out offshore. Rumor has it there's monsters, and monsters are being caught. There's gonna be a lot of big fish caught. Can you sustain it for three days? That's gonna be the, the key. I got what you call zero experience on Ride Pat, man. You know, the weather's gonna be a very important factor. It looks like day two may be canceled at this moment during to severe weather. So catching a limit on day one is gonna be really important. Make sure you don't bomb day one. Three day event, you can come back. We only probably are gonna have two days. So it's gonna be very important for me to actually catch fish. Day one strategy, just get my first five in the boat and then we'll take it.
My name is Jake Chauncey. I'm from Texarkana, Texas. Uh, my history with Wright Patman, I live here, uh, so you know I fish it pretty regular. Right now they're in all phases. Uh, you can catch them uh, pre or post. Well, everybody that's from around here knows you can catch them on a spinner bait on Wright Patman. Anything flipping, uh, any kind of a bug style bait, and then the topwater buds for sure. I feel like it could take anywhere from uh, uh, 60 to 66. There will be a couple, if not more, over nine pounders that are weighed in. Uh, the wind here on my home lake would, would be, you know, everything I could dream of. You know, once I found out that it was going to be here on my home water, I knew it was a huge advantage for me uh, just because of the knowledge that I have of the lake. It would mean everything to me to be able to, to come back home and win. Hey, girl. Oh! So who do we have here? This is my daughter, J.C. Joe, and Mama's going to kill us if she's on, uh, on the computer or on TV looking like she does. <laughs> is Daddy going to win this tournament? How big is the fish you're going to catch? 10-pounder. <laughs> show, me, show me with your hands. How big? That big? All right. <laughs> All right, guys. No insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster. An insurance cluster. Yeah, I doubt that exists. It's a bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Will from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun stuff. beach day, everybody. Hey there, Fisher World One Shaking Fat Cat Newton coming at you from Sling Blades here in Texarkana, Texas with the owner, Kevin. Kevin's going to give us some details on how the things work here and uh, just tell us what's shaking, brother. Um, we have uh, eight axe throwing lanes um, available to throw in. Um, ages five and up can throw, so kids are able to come. We've been growing like crazy um, and we're, we're having to extend more. So we're going to have three more lanes here, so we'll have 11 lanes available uh, for everybody. Uh, you can bring food, drinks in as well. Um, I am a BYOB facility. There's no liquor involved. It's just beer and wine. Family friendly though, it Bobby. So don't get crazy because, yeah. hey, Kevin yeah. will put it on you. Hey. Well, you can show me how to throw these axes yeah, so we can show the folks at home. Easy. Oh, uh, bullseye. Now, what happens when you get a bullseye so here at Sling Blades? Bullseye here, right behind you, there's a bell. You can ring this bell. You can ring that bullseye bell. One of my coaches will come out here and take a picture of you in front of your bullseye. When you guys come back, if you look at this back wall, all these pictures of people that hit bullseyes since they've been here. So, Joe. All right, Kevin, step out of the, the danger go. zone. Let's see what I got. All right. All right, so I'm just set one step. Where's the line? As long as I don't cross that, I'm good. Oh, there it is. Got gotcha. you. All right, here we go. And just follow through, right? Just follow through. Boom, baby. I'm kind of an uh, axe connoisseur, if y'all didn't know. So I'm like uh, Huck Finn, or what's the big, the, the blue ox. Who was the guy with the blue ox? The dude that chopped down? Never mind. It would have been good if somebody knew what I was talking about. How about the underhand? Gonna release it low? Oh! Sling Blade, Texarkana, Texas. Come check my boy Kevin out. Family friendly, good times, good people, and PFL. Stop number two, right past the lake, Texarkana. Kevin, Kevin. Sling Blade, Texas. <laughs> so one of the best things about Sling Blades, you can come here and throw axes all night. You can have a good time with your family and friends. But if you had a bad day on the water, if Bobby was out there and cut you off and caught your five pounder or whatever, you can come here and pretend that's Bobby and Ha! Ah! You want to cut me off? And you want to get my five pounder? Ha! Ah! You can come here and do that. But just don't be so loud. Just be more nice because I'm worked up. Yeah, man, come hit that thing and... Pretend it's Bobby that stole your five pounder. Omega products are built by fishermen for fishermen. We set out to build the best vibrating jig on the market. The blending of high-end components 
A detailed assembly process and a burning desire to achieve perfection are the pillars of the rapture bait. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. The rapture was no different. Countless hours of testing and retesting. The result, a vibrating jig that hunts, hooks, and catches bass like no other. Welcome back, NPFL Live. Getting our first look here at Nick Pravonizak Dudley. Our second place, third place angler, excuse me, coming into today. Different look, a little different look, a little we, different water clarity, a little different area. We talked about change and we're seeing it. We're seeing a different look. He, I don't know where he's at right now, but it definitely looks, of course, like whether it's up way up a creek or up a river, but different look, different water clarity. He has made the move to, we've talked about that and echoed that a lot. Nick probably, for me, Dudley, over the last two days of MPFL Live, has we've seen the most quality bites from him, especially yesterday. True that. He had, yep. you know, when he gets – in the areas he was in yesterday, which looked nothing like this, which you're pointing out. Maybe he thinks he burned those areas, but he had a lot of those three-pound-plus fish yesterday to get to that 18-14 he brought in. Of course, 23 even the first day. I think these bass are spawn, spawned out at two and a half and three pounds. I think they come out of the womb yeah, to and it's a lot. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That. And, you know, I, I say that jokingly, but we've been watching 10 anglers for however many, you know, three days. Haven't seen, like, truly, I would think, you know, like, little one, little one, little, you know. Less or, than 12 inches. Right, up to 12, 12, yes, 12 inches. Kind of smaller fish, yeah. But I I think they must come out the womb at, at two pounds. The fry oh, right. swimming around at two pounds. I think that's the entire state of Texas, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> they come out big, yeah, right? <laughs> they, Texas Parks and Wildlife does a fantastic job with all of these fisheries. And it's been really cool seeing this tournament play out this week, but breaking out a hidden gem to the professional bass fishing world, our MPFL anglers have done a great job with Wright Patman yes, they this have. week. Just the overall consistency on the just the what I would call a good solid average fish. Let's take a look, Dudley, now at our unofficial top 10 from our weigh in live app on showdown saturday the final day where we will hand out a lot of paychecks fifty thousand dollar first place prize and right now keith carson he has been leading it wire to wire and he does not look like he wants to turn loose of the trophy or the check Sitting unofficially right now with a limit for a little shy of 10 pounds. Not quite the limits we've seen on the first two mornings from Keith because he was shooting his shot early the first two days with some big fish. But William Fletcher, a newcomer to our top 10 unofficially. Mark Schilling, who has been in the top 10 all week. Sheldon Collings, who made a big push yesterday off to a quick start He's this morning. He's got a five-pounder in the mix already. Absolutely. Four fish for eight pounds with a five-pounder, so a lot to grow on there for Sheldon. Brandon Perkins, Tennessee angler in fifth place. Randy Cacral, Eddie Carper, Jesse Millsaps, Nick Pravonizak, and John Hookup, Soakup, who slid into our top ten yesterday. It's going to be an interesting showdown Saturday. A little bit tougher day so far, but cannot stress enough. The afternoon delights that you call it, Dudley. Yes. The afternoon's delights. This unofficial way in way live app leaderboard will change. And of course, want to remind all of you: this is completely unofficial until all of our anglers arrive back the Texarkana Convention Center for the drive-through weigh-in with Big Al McCullough. 
Now we're getting our first look here. David Gaston and that swim jig technique. We got a, we did get a look at him on the quad box, but this is all David all the time right here. Mm -hmm. One of my there's, favorite anglers in our field right here, David Gaston. There's a lot of anglers that excel in certain techniques, and he is one with who excels with that swim jig in his hand. He knows that that technique inside and out. You can just – you can hear the rhythm through his yeah, rod. It's incredible. Of course, an Alabama angler fishes that Coosa River a lot, and this is that – what I would call the Alabama shake, the Coosa River swim jig technique. You're keeping the rod tip high, keeping the bait up in the column. But look how fast. Look how much water he's covering. We got to see this at Ufala, too. Yes, we did. Where David ended up in second place, won $30,000 for second place down there. I'd say that's a pretty good payday. Yeah. For a week's worth of work. I'll take that. Doing what you love? Mm-hmm. David was very confident to drive through way in yesterday. And I bet he sleeps good at night. Because that's work. Yeah, <laughs> that is absolutely work. And he, basically uh, all he's doing it no good for so the far. viewers that are fish. No, biggest one's probably two pounds. Uh had a lot of short strikes, a lot of fish miss it. Water's muddied up a lot. It's actually blown out in one area I'm fishing, but as that sun gets up and we get a little some more movement going when that sun gets higher. Put some fish where they need to be for you can capture them. Or you can at least, you know, cast to them where they, you want them to be at. Not really no. I mean, I had one look like a real big one this morning, wake on it. And she rolled. Missed it. So I got to go back and catch her at some point. I don't know if she's on bed or what. I thought a lot of them were. You catch a male, you know, he's peeing everywhere. You catch a female. I think I had all the ones I caught yesterday weren't spawned out yet, but all the males look like crap. It tells me they've been, males been trying to do it for a while, and then females been waiting on things to get right. A lot of them have, but full moon, or not close to a full moon, so that ought to. Make things a little interesting. If that wind dies down, it'd be a real good day. Seems like this place is, I don't know. You'll catch one on the actual trolling motor, then you'll catch one hugged up against the bank where you can't get no shallower. Dudley, something I asked you at the beginning of the broadcast, that swim jig, is it catching spawners? David says yes right there, and he's a swim jig expert. I, hey, I didn't deny it, but the percentage of them I still think are post spawners. You just feel like any moment we're going to get to see a fully loaded hook set right there from Mr. Gaston. I think just about everybody in the top ten has been in this area at some point close to it. Not everybody, but I'm going to say eight out of ten boats in the top ten has been back up under this bridge at some point this week. You know, I didn't get a big bite till 10 o'clock yesterday. I missed that fish. Out. David has not updated his way live app because he said he had four fish and he is showing <coughs> zero fish. I don't think you gave him enough of a butt chewing. Whew. I think 
you need to be a little bit more harsh on them next it. time. Soft plastics. So David there missing a fish. Make that thing yeah. straight. They we've will not got eat some it. fish catches that we've missed in a highlight reel. Going to be brought to you by Progressive. We're going to take a look back at some of the activity we've seen at Wright Patman Lake here in the city of Texarkana, Texas. White. Getting a look at Robbie Frazier this morning doing work. Alabama angler made a surge yesterday. Sit there our top ten. Some of that bling bling. Bling bling. David Gaston. Wrestling. The swim jig king well, of the NPFL. Definitely using weight. <laughs> and swinging on him, too. It's a good one. Boom! There goes a solid two pounder. <laughs> David always having fun. Back over to our leader. Gosh, he Carson flips. unofficially it says, yeah, they're, has they're a limit. Jay Willie, Joe Willard throwing a spinnerbait this morning. Actually, goes for. Dang, that just barely hit the water. Brandon Perkins, nice fish on a spinnerbait, Dudley. Adjustments being made. Bling blinging is happening. Got him. <laughs> Keith Carson. Giant, but that might be number five. He weighed 25 pounds the first day, 22 yesterday. A little slower day, but still sitting at the top of our leaderboard unofficially. Now we go over That'd have been nice. to Chris Heath. Chris started the day in 10th place. Going into showdown Saturday. And this is our first look at Chris. Didn't get to catch up with Chris at Ufala or here at Wright Patman. So this is our first look at MPFL Pro Chris Heath. Okay. It's always good to get new faces in on this live show. He you learn a lot by any angler watching them how they fish and what they do conditions are changing it's Chris. a totally different lake than what we had the last two days for sure <clears throat> it's going to be a really really tough fight you're going to have to hit them in the head luckily you just caught my first one about 15 minutes ago First keeper, I caught a little one this morning on buzz bait. So I had to be very methodical and keep pitching this green pitch tackle jig around. I think it's the first I jig, you, you know, who actually flipping, flipping jig. a yeah, jig. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, most everything has been creature baits. Definitely blowed out two of my other areas. A lot of plastics. So. A lot of rain, a lot of wind. But it's a, it's a bait I got a lot of confidence in, so we're gonna keep pitching that around. Make it work. So I actually flipping that jig, Dudley. Why a soft plastic over a jig this time of year? Why do we see that more? Because a jig is, you know, one of the most popular basslers of all time. That's no secret. Of course, we got David Gaston swimming a jig, but actually letting it fall in there, actually picking apart the cover slow. Why do those soft plastics 
like your creature baits and crawls work better than a jig this time of year for the most part. And I, I think relative this area's got a lot of pressure. Relatively speaking, depends on where you're at. A lot of boats coming here yesterday, but, but I was catching them behind them. I don't think they were getting them. The jig. I don't think a lot of people's fishing a jig, much less a jig that gets through the wood like this one does. It's like you heard me ask. I don't think I need to answer the question, <laughs> no, I then, right? Just, <laughs> yeah, I think, he, I think, I think plastic, though, in general, plastic technology has gotten so good, meaning different designs, you know, of plastic different shapes, and different things. shapes, and uh, a Texas rig is really a higher percentage hookup rate than a jig. A lot of people like a jig, but you do lose a lot, and you get hung up on a jig more often. When you are flipping bushes. Yes, I can agree that uh, a jig is not going to be my first choice. Typically, jigs are flipped on bluffs up underneath boat docks. That's where a jig typically dominates. Anytime I'm around ton of cover, limbs, nooks and crannies like you see that you're going in, yeah, no, jig is not going to be n my number one choice for flipping. Now, of course, you got your jig style profile with your bladed baits you got your jig style profile with your swim jigs but you're just hitting lanes and you know alleyways and you're not you know you're not going to get you're not throwing that profile straight into the you know condominium of of limbs so yes interesting he's only one we heard flipping a jig and you can't ever rule any bait they have been out killing it all week though choking it's the hardest jig bite i've ever seen in my life it's been a lot of fun shows what you know Dudley. i know i know nothing right of course chris worked hard to get into our top 10 with that jig but it is unique because most of the guys have been primarily flipping creature style baits crawls but when we speak this we're speaking majority not minority Absolutely. Majority of the time is when I would choose this. Dudley has time to pay some bills. Going to take a quick break from the live action here at Wright Patman, and we will be back as things heat up here on Showdown Saturday in PFL Live. All right, guys, no insurance talk on Beach Day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. Yeah, I doubt that exists. The bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Will from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFL. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit and started. And now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. FullyLoadedChew.com. Check it out. Welcome back to Wright-Patman Lake. 
the National Professional Fishing League brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Dudley is still disappointed. Flo has not made an appearance here in Texarkana. I was texting her last night. <laughs> yeah, no. Just trying to see when she was going to come in. Getting the ETA? Yeah. I'm with that. And she had a little hiccup yesterday, but I think we might get a, a sighting today. Let's take a look now at our leader, Keith Carson. Who grabbed the lead day one and refuses to give it up. Very selfish. From a very non-selfish guy. <laughs> there ought to be one on that bush right there. That one. That ought to be automatic. Ah! <laughs> I'm not buying you fried Stay tomatoes on. over that. You're ridiculous. Call it the shot. Stay on. They just look too pretty. Yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a good one there. That, that's a good one. It's not a giant, but it's a good one. That one's, that's about a four, four plus. That goes in the big fish side. So now we're gonna call. Two, we got two big ones, or two fours or so. And I think the smallest one here is gonna be number four, which is the last one I caught, which is that little dink right there. And that's the one, I'm almost sure it's number four. I'm gonna double check by measuring him because he was the one that barely touched. I got, a, I got a couple small ones in there. But yep, barely touches 14. So that fish can go back. See you, buddy. Finish in my limit for me. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. Got two good ones. Laid mentioned it. So, need Keith mentioned two four pounders, Dudley. Two four pounders in the box. Unofficially says he has 10 pounds before that fish on the Way Live app. Nah. Guessing a little bit light here on Keith for sure. Mm hmm. We're looking to watch that replay again. Yeah, getting a little bit. Just oh, get that hook set. Stay on. Stay on. Well, could end up being a crucial fish I on this tougher day. Yes. I wonder if the fish actually <laughs> listened to what we say up there. <laughs> he was commanding her. Oh, my God. Stay on. Stay on. I know they don't listen to oh, me. That's a good they one. Listen to you. That, that's a good one. It's not a giant, but it's a good one. That one's that's another look one. there at that Keith Carson fish. Back over to Jay Willie. Joe Willard, who put the poles down and doing some flipping now. We saw him with the bling bling, the spinnerbait earlier today. It looks like he's picking that cover apart. I, you know, we laid mention to looks like you know they're in a different area the watercolor is different i'm gonna lend that this the watercolor is from last night yeah i, w I would say so I could have really changed things mm -hmm. two inches of rain like you mentioned yesterday at the end of the broadcast these flat texas lakes things can change in a hurry you you bring a lake up flat like it's three inches it's going back a hundred yards. That's right. You, you know, the, it, 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 the rate of depth, uh, not vertically but horizontally, always increases anytime you have flat terrain. Absolute beauty of a day, though. We had those looming storms all day yesterday. Now it's just bright bluebird. High pressure, though, not the best fishing days a lot of times, though. And we talked about that, that low pressure coming in. Had those big fish biting yesterday. And today, so far, 
taking a look at our unofficial leaderboard. Lots of fish being caught, but not like the last two days. You know, that 36th place check yesterday was about 15 pounds a day. You know, the 15-pound a day average, which is incredible. Yes. You know, it's an incredible pace. Will we see that today? Should be interesting on show down Saturday. And, of course, oh, my gosh. Can anybody catch Keith Carson? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is the uh, – Question of the, the week. Yes. It, it's the, it's so cool talking to Keith because he's just he acts like he's just going fishing with his buddies tomorrow. Eh, no big deal. No pressure. One of the hardest things to do, Luke, watching him fish right here, he's at a snail's pace, right? And when the pressure's on and you don't have anything, what is the the typically you're going to start what fishing faster? Absolutely. You know your your natural uh, uh, thought process is I need to hurry up and try to get something. His foot has he could have probably fished on his same charge of trolling motors since day one. You know <laughs> he wouldn't have That's even right. had to ch charge them back up. But I'm just. You know, watching him right now keep that, this is valuable info that you're watching. Even though there's nothing happening, he's not catching one, but just watching somebody who has catapulted theirself into the top ten after two days, watching what he's doing, and he's just standing there, like literally just standing there looking at the clouds and listening to the birds, and, and yet this is valuable stuff we're watching. You know, you can't teach this. You can say a snail's pace, but watching this unfold in front of your head and, and your eyes is uh, so valuable. And to stay calm is very tough to do, very tough. We've all hit that panic button. We've all, you know, oh, my gosh, it's t whatever, 1030, and I don't have a, I don't have a limit yet. Ho, 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 you know, don't be hitting that panic button yet now get to be about two o'clock and you still sitting on zero yeah go ahead and We're hit over the choke here now button. and leave rule in primary area <laughs> you know, where I've started get your excuses be, uh, ready yeah get drive through way yeah been able to get a limit and each day i've caught a caught a four pounder and some three pounders in here and uh you know we're gonna we're gonna milk this i think for quite a while yesterday i come in here and basically from where we're at now up to 200 yards up there. I went up and down. It took me about four hours to go up and down, and I ended up getting a limit and had had about 14 pounds when I when I left here. But these fish are here. I mean, there's just so many hiding spots in here, and uh, you know, I don't know if some of them are on the bed or not. Um, you know, some of the fish I've caught out of here have had some bloody tails, so that's why I'm being real methodical and just you know, just trying to pick everything apart and. Uh, I'm throwing this craw tube, I got a rattle in it, and you know, I, I think it's just a little bit something different that everybody else is throwing. And you know, with that rattle in there, this water is real dirty. I think it just it allows those fish to key in on the bait. So, seems to be working. We're going to keep rolling with it and see what we come up with. Oh my gosh, there he was. I just pitched in there three times before the fish ate it. Spotter. So you're going to answer the question for him there. He says yeah. he's not sure if they're spawning. One spot, three casts. Spotter. A lot of these bites I'm not feeling. All of a sudden, I see my line just running off. Jay Willie went on point right there for a second. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. he's tense. Running. He's ready to go. Joel sitting right outside of our top 10 right now unofficially. We'll take a look though. That unofficial 
Way live leaderboard right now. Dudley here in beautiful Texarkana, Texas, right Patman Lake, presented by Progressive Insurance. And Keith Carson grabbed a hold of the lead on day one and still sitting there being so selfish, as we've said. But Mark Schilling has made a jump back up into second place, 15-pound limit, one of the biggest limits we've seen so far today. Just getting it done early. Brian Hatfield, mm. Spring City, Tennessee angler, who we got to cover a lot down at Lake Eufaula, has jumped unofficially up to third place. Sheldon Collings, one of our most talented young anglers on the MPFL trail, was started the day tied for 11th, has jumped up to fourth place. William Fletcher, who's made a big jump today as well. Brandon Perkins, who started the day in the top 10. Randy Kukrall, probably butchering his name. I feel like I am. Eddie Carper, Jesse Millsaps, and Nick Pravonizak, who – Hasn't registered a fish on Way Live, but we've seen that with Nick some this week. Might be out of service a little bit. Jesse Millsaps, though, Dudley, I want to I want to point that out. Huge shots fired over the bow of Keith Carson's boat yesterday. Mm -hmm. Throwing the swim jig, twenty three pound limit, rocketed into second place. Not registering a fish yet on the Way Live app. It, I'd be a fool to say I'm not shocked by that. You, you, you've you seen David Gaston. He's already has a, a limit or small, you know, he had four. But he, he may have had a limit, but to see him not even register one yet, I'm going to say he may be not registering them. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that. We're going to have to have a talk is what yes. you're saying. We're going to yes. have to have a talk again. But taking a look, of course, everything unofficial until we get them back here to the Texarkana Convention Center for the drive-through weigh-in with Big Al McCullough, who almost has no voice <laughs> left whatsoever after screaming at all of the big bass coming across the stage. And Dudley, somebody I've been looking forward to getting on a live camera for a long time. Oh, you we are introducing Derek Blake. <laughs> to the world right now. This is going to be fun. And we're going to let him know he's on live. We're going to need to. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that Derek Blake is the Kenny Powers of the NPFL? Yeah, is I can go with say? that. I can go with that. Derek Blake, Tennessee River Angler, East Tennessee, Watts Bar Lake. Fish the FLW Tour. A lot of success. Toyota series over the years, the BFL. Tell us what happened earlier. We're live right now, so I don't well, know I had uh, two two bites on a chair bait. My main my main hoe ain't producing. I don't I can't get no white jig bite going this morning. I've had two chair baits, both of them come off. And the third bite come off at the boat, about a two pounder, two and a half. I got one one solid fish. No. But they're starting to bite now. They don't get good going good till about 10 o'clock anyway, it seems like. Yesterday I had... Th I caught some early yesterday, but first day I didn't catch them until later in the day. So I ain't going to panic quite yet. Hadn't come on a... Kinky beaver. Hey, it's a kid show. For any of those of you that are just tuning in to MPFL Live, Derek is not from Minnesota. A lot muddier in here than it was. There we go. Born and raised. And somebody decides to call me. That's Flo calling me. I thought I had that ringer off. I butt dialed him. I'm sorry, guys. Again, I did that to Keith Carson day one. Are you are you confused by the choice of ringtone? Dudley? Yes. I was thinking maybe George Strait. He may. Not to put him in a box. He he might have Little Wayne, but I'm just saying, Derek. That was I don't know what that was. Four like that. You're back. That was EDM techno. 15, I just hope that wasn't slow 15, 16 pound again. calling him and not calling me. For a title where I need to be at. For a top 10, I feel like.
there got a check down at Eufaula. Had a real unique pattern. He was working down there actually catching schooling fish really close to Lake Point State Park. Was barely getting bit till 1 p.m. every day and they would come up schooling. He caught them all three days. Finished his limit out right Water's before in weigh in every single three or four day. Inches. fishermen they think ledge oh, fishermen, offshore fishermen, cramps, and Dan. Derek is the exact opposite of that he lives for shallow water cover right Patman certainly fits in his wheelhouse Did if you were a shallow water fisherman coming into this event you should have been jacked up your <laughs> adrenaline should have been pumping from the first time you launched that boat you yeah, see this place you're <laughs> like uh oh yeah 1. 9 and foot then if you were offshore here. not even two foot these fish are shallow if you're an offshore fisherman you were probably pretty pissed <laughs> i imagine so <clears throat> missed that one Loaded hook set. Now, like. what would you do here, Luke? Turn Bring it off. Swing it sideways here. Would you save that hook and sinker if there was a spawner if potential? I, if spawner I thought there? I could throw back and catch them fishing for 50 grand, I'm probably going to break it off. Exactly. Yeah, I would not. I had a bite right there. Lost it, bad boy. They ain't biting that good. Yes, sir. Uh, he just, mm -mm. They just ain't quite we getting it like they have been. Off. They just ain't getting it like they have been. We still live? Tell me when we ain't live. And I won't talk. You are live. bump us up here. Talking. This patch of trees he, here. He talking there, Clay. Derek takes a little move here. Gonna get, get a look at our swim jig specialist, David Gaston from Alabama. That that sun's getting on up where he wants it. You know, he laid mentioned that earlier. I just need that sun to get up to position them back in there where I want them. I'm gonna say we're gonna see a late day charge by him again today. You know, he's sitting okay. I mean, he's where he's at now, but. As long as he gets them entered into that Way Live app, we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Still showing zero unofficially, but we know better. Oh, David. Dudley's got a few other rods on the deck, but I don't believe he's going to pick any of them up well, <laughs> at any point. <laughs> those, those rods on the deck, one might be a white swim jig. That's might right. Might be a black That's and blue, right. you know. Very true. There's plenty of tournaments when I have six spinning rods on my deck, but they're all the same thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Takes a while to retie and leaders and time is money. Mm-hmm. Of course, every ounce matters with these guys. Every fish they can bring to the weigh-in goes towards their progressive angler of the year points. And at the end of the year, we're going to name that progressive angler of the year, which is one of the hardest titles to win in any tournament trail. That is the guy who's been the most consistent over six events, the best finishes. They receive points. See mama's in there. Chris Heath. Start of the day in 10th place. Hooked up. <laughs> not sure that one's going to make the team. Dudley. Again, not, I mean, we're seeing him, of course, catch a small one, but relatively not many small ones. I, 
for three days we haven't yeah, seen that. Right. Yeah, we're seeing a lot. Like Keith's quality has gone down. Is that a weather factor oh, that was or a fishing factor. pressure factor? Or both. Mm -hmm. A little combination. You know, this lake's been hit on for five, or this will be day six, three official days of practice mm. and yeah. three competition days. You can you can slow a lake down in six days of fishing Absolutely. with 100 skilled well, anglers. Yes, yeah, yeah. skilled anglers. You can slow a lake down. So you got to always assume that the uh, pace is going to uh, slow down a little bit, but just a look there at Brandon Perkins' frog for you, Dudley. Mm -hmm. They zoomed in on it. You know how much you like to see that. Our MPFL I, camera. Oh, look at that. I did talk to two anglers yesterday now that – Talked about catching them on a buzz bait. I know of two 16 plus pound bags that came on a buzz bait and they, and they didn't pick it up till late. Talked about losing some big ones. So we haven't seen it in our top 10. These were just some random anglers I was talking to out in the parking lot. But were the random anglers actually in our tournament? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making sure they you weren't were. just going and talking to anybody. <laughs> they were. Because you like to talk fishing. You'll talk fishing with him. And I told her I'd catch her a big one today. Well, it has not happened yet, buddy. I thought they'd be a little active this morning, and I tried to fish fast. I mean, I caught one on a spinnerbait. Um, not a big one at all. And had several other bites um but i don't think i've had a good bite yet i think i got three in the live well right now um no solid ones but i got a long day today if they'll bite this frog i mean i i think i'm i get a total of like 10 hours today and uh i mean that's a big one every two hours on a frog so um, bad news is, hadn't had a single blow up all morning on it. Um, but, and I was hoping with the rain last night they would, uh, water might come up just a little bit. And if it did, I have not been able to tell yet. Um, I've kind of fished some newer stuff this morning though. Uh, same creek, but like a lot closer to the mouth and a different side of the creek. We saw Brandon do a bulk of his damage on a frog yesterday. Skipping these bushes and things, Dudley, and he's doing that again today. Trying to get a look at Alabama's Robbie Frazier. And a swing and a miss. Missed a fish there and immediately pitched back. Just in the middle of nowhere, it looks like there, Dudley. Looks like it, but you know he's hitting a hard piece of cover. For sure. My man swung like Gorilla was going to be on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> Everybody's amped up on Showdown Saturday. And by the looks of that background, he could be in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Dudley looking for those dinosaurs, as Keith Carson said on day one. There's a lot of dinosaurs that lives in Lake. And they're called <laughs> gar. <laughs> Every time <laughs> I see a gar, That's I just true. think of ancient dinosaur days. There's some bass in this lake that are probably dinosaurs as well. Those things will drive you nuts now, you know, especially with swim jigs. And um, they like to stay near the surface frogs they'll pop a frog they'll pop a swim jig in a heartbeat you come across the nose of them 
but those those critters sure are ancient. Robbie's power pulled down just up oh, coming up now. Was <laughs> was very common theme this year. Yeah, so far between the first two events, definitely the power pole's getting a workout on the National Professional Fishing League. Throw you a little trivia your way, Luke. Look, his look right now, if you could see it. What is the first tree to get leaves and the first tree to lose their leaves in the outdoor world? You know, Dudley, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. You talked about making soups out of flowers yesterday. <laughs> I'm not going to get this right. <laughs> like, when we start talking submerged vegetation in lakes, everything's hydrilla to me. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It would be the willow tree. Okay, there it is. The willow tree. David Dudley. First one. The get. instructor, Double D. Double D, the instructor, bringing you the goods on live, just like our top ten anglers today, which we are fortunate enough to get to watch thanks to our sponsors. We're going to take a quick look at the people that make the MPFL possible. We'll be back very soon with more action from Wright Patman Lake. <laughs> Omega products are built by fishermen for fishermen. We set out to build the best vibrating jig on the market. The blending of high-end components, a detailed assembly process, and a burning desire to achieve perfection are the pillars of the Rapture bait. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. The Rapture was no different. Countless hours of testing and retesting. The result? A vibrating jig that hunts, hooks, and catches bass like no other. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster. An insurance cluster. Yeah, I doubt that exists. It's a bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFL. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started, and now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco-free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at FullyLoadedChew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. FullyLoadedChew.com, check it out. Welcome back to Wright Patman. Getting a look here at Derek Blake. 
who is an angler we're going to see a lot of this year on MPFL Live. Well, we finally got a fish to buy. What? Looky there. From Blake over to the quad box. I think he's going to make 14, though. Jesse Millsap. Yeah, that that one he is. Now. Come on, fish. Come on. Stubborn. That one's going. Oh, yeah. Looky there. We got keeper number one. When you come in with 23 pounds, everything looks He's small. A little guy, but we right. got keeper number I, one finally. It took long enough. Right He's a dean. But got to start somewhere. Jesse confirming that he did have zero keepers. We thought maybe That's sandbagging a little, little bit on the way live out, but. That's right. Hey, he is he's not. Still out there. did I not say we was going to get a bite down through here? You he did. You did. You called it. I got to put it in the way scale. I mean, it was a giant and all, but. Dudley, I like to see the relationship between the cameraman and the angler, it becomes like a team. You do your, you know these the, the camera the guys, the MPFL guys that bring us all of this live action. They they are pulling they for play. each angler they're in the boat with. You know they want them to do good because you know how it is. They see like we are what they're going through out there on the water. So cool to see Jesse right there getting his first keeper. Jesse's out with Galen Murray today, cameraman on the water. Yeah, they, when you spend, you know, eight to ten hours with somebody, it doesn't matter who they are. You end up building some type of relationship. Right. We're going to get along at right. some point. We got to. Right. right. Have no choice. There are some leagues where they uh, have a total of one. You're not allowed to even talk to the camera. Right. 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 They can't even high five you, fist pump you, nothing. It's cool to see that emotion. Though. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you but he's close. 14 inch fish plus to go one four. I have a feeling today you take every fish you can get. You get a bite, you get you better take it. Overall theme so far, Dudley, that I that I'm picking up off of these guys, just a lot tougher day overall number of bites wise compared to what they've been used it ain't to. Over with yet. Uh, one thing you can gauge a lake by and how ab abundant the fish are Glad is how that lake fishes on day three and four. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? And you can tell a lot by the population of fish on day three and four. Um, how quickly can you, you know, slow down a lake or if a lake keeps par. And for two days... You know, this lake has been fun. And, been and, and here, yeah. technically, that it was day five, right? Absolutely. Yes, after practice and everything. But it's been phenomenal. Mm hmm. It seems like everybody's been. I'm just shocked I'm not seeing out. him yeah, use that swim there, jig. No and he could have been doing it all morning and, you know, made an adjustment and started flipping for the first time. Of course, we're seeing. Four of our, ang our anglers in the quad box here. You got David Gaston, Nick Provanizek, Keith Carson, and Jesse Millsaps. This is our top four coming into today. Of course, Josh Ray, an angler that was in fourth place. He's one of them big old bodies. Yesterday. Five plus bodies. We tried to cover him several times, and we have no live coverage of him because of the the cell phone signal so we actually did not send a camera with josh ray he's like i'm fishing up the river don't have a lot of cell phone coverage but i'm hearing 
that Fat Cat may have caught up with him at some point this morning. Fat Cat texted me that earlier, so hoping that Fat Cat can get some coverage with Josh Ray, Arkansas angler, great angler, and uh, haven't got to cover him as much as we would like. Spotty cell phone service in the area of Wright Patman that he is in. Look, we have we haven't seen John hook up, soak up this morning either, do they? I think he is there taking is, his express aluminum boat and got off the grid. Apparently, we yeah. we haven't had a lot of coverage of John. Same reason, haven't seen a lot of John this week. He's been hovering around that top ten. We talked about, oh, he's struggling, and he was in twentieth the right. first day, but it's just not what we uh, expect from John. Yeah. It definitely gets here. Rough out on the You know, looking at the unofficial board, we got fifteen pounds is the the top bag unofficially right now. In a 14-pound bag by Brian Hatfield. Brian, you know, really tons of camera time down at Ufall. Great angler. Been quiet this week, though, as far as the live coverage is concerned. The biggest bag of the day certainly. is from Vincent Melkus. He's sitting on, ooh, he's got 17 pounds, 8 ounces, and I think we broke the, um, I'm going to scroll back up. I think we got a big bass leader. New big bass. Yep, he's got a seven-pounder. Would that be the leader after three days? Or we'll take the big bite challenge. Big bass as of right now, it's at six pounds, 15 ounces. Nope. Of course, seven. Texas. No. Nope. That's right. We, we had uh, Keith Carson guessed he had a seven-pound earlier this week, but when he got to the drive through weigh-in, Al McCullough said, no, sir. That is not a seven-pounder. It weighed six pounds. Yep. So, so as of right now, unofficially, uh, we have one claiming the seven-pound mark. And that Big Bite Big Bass Challenge takes home coin. John Cox, the one and not only John Cox at follow brought home a little under $5,000 for one cast one bass now not like you follow so the same thing is going to happen here not bitcoin i want to make sure not not bitcoin. <laughs> actual coin yes. we're going to say make that clear not bitcoin dudley you are well versed on a lot of things i've decided From bitcoin to dandelion soup yeah to botany you are <laughs> what my mind does in the day is and sunglasses yeah. you are Really well versed. What my mind does in a day <laughs> would make most people go bananas. You know, spending a lot of time with you doing live, I'm starting to realize what your mind does during the day. And it, it is. It's, it's a little dangerous. It's a dangerous it? place. <laughs> <laughs> I think some would say that about both of us, though. They would not want to enter our minds, would they? Absolutely. Definitely tougher today. Pretty obvious, right? Pretty Absolutely. obvious, definitely tougher. But, you know, just watching uh, the fishermen today, they are even quiet. Meaning, yeah. it, you know. It's like showdown it, Saturday. It, there's no, there's <laughs> Now, in the beginning, you know, day one, day two, a lot of chatter from the top ten, or, well, the, the ten anglers. Absolutely. Now they're a little bit quiet. You A lot more focused. They're like, I got a chance for 50 grand. Interesting. Every bite matters in that progressive AOI. Every bite matters towards a $9,000 check. Of course, top prize, $50,000 here. I don't know if they relax the mask on these bass in the area that they're at. They could have their masks on. <laughs> <laughs> we need to send a memo to them that Texas is open. Yeah, t <laughs> open. Take your mask off. We can. You can you bite, can bite these lures. You can bite. <laughs> Look here, Jay Willie, Joel Willard, Minnesota Angle. What's up? like Joel had moved about three feet from the last time we had seen <laughs> correct. him. Correct. Please before team. Would that be correct? The 
spray in the background. Got excited over that. That was actually uh, incorrect by you, Luke. Oh, here we go. That was a wood duck. That oh, it was a wood duck. You're right. It was a wood duck. Gosh. What I hate to you? tell you you're right, but it was a wood duck. Oh, man. Clay. Hey. <laughs> what I duck? missed that. Listen to that Osprey wood duck. Come here. Could be a hybrid. You never know. I know you know everything about nature, but maybe you don't know everything it's about touching. it. touching. Right Joel unofficially. Yeah, definitely smaller today. This fish. Number three. 34th place. <sighs> has not updated his way live app because just sold us. He has three right there and on way live showing zero. So shame on you, Joel. But we're glad that you're working towards that fully loaded live well. <sighs> Dudley will meet you behind the stage to straighten him up. Let's straighten you up about the way live app. Let the little ones out of the way. We got to keep good. going. Get some a couple of big ones. Couple good quality bites. Ah, he, he might be a YouTuber. Did you see that? Oh, Joel does. He has a YouTube series called Black and Blue with another one of our anglers, Greg Mansfield. They document all their tournament exploits across the country. Good stuff from Joel. I heard the famous Greg Mansfield. The sickness, Dudley's. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, that's right. I heard the famous GoPro. Beep, 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 beep. That's right. I just assume. So he knows where that clip's at, right? That's what mm -hmm. we're seeing there. Me and you both have heard that a lot. <laughs> yes. Our YouTube addiction. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to have to check him out and watch him catch these fish. No doubt. Double time. Dudley, I don't know if you heard that wood duck in the background there, but uh, <laughs> it's not an osprey. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the clarity. Okay, I just want to make sure. I want anybody confused out there. There it goes. Yeah. Making sure his GoPro is all set up. And man, Joel is just. So I want to remind everybody that the leaderboard is unofficial. Like right there where Joel hasn't updated his Way Live app. He's sitting on three instead of zero. But we're going to take a look at this unofficial top ten leaderboard here. Wright Patman showdown Saturday, the final day of the National Professional Fishing League presented by Progressive. And we are still watching the Keith Carson show day three. Sitting unofficially at 60 pounds, three ounces for three days. So we did break that 20 pound average mark, Dudley. And that's what a lot of people predicted coming into this event. But unofficially, Keith still sitting at the top. Mark Schilling, Texas angler, with one of the biggest stringers we've seen so far today. Unofficially 15 pounds. He's sitting with 49 pounds, seven ounces. So Keith with an almost 11 pound lead over second place, Mark Schilling. Brian Hatfield, Sheldon Collings. William Fletcher, Eddie Carper, Randy Cacrall, Brandon Perkins, Cody Ryan, Graney, an angler that made a big move yesterday unofficially in ninth place now, and Shane Cole, an angler who dropped 23-11 yesterday. Mm. Three for seven pounds so far today has made a big jump, and Jesse Millsaps, our second place angler, has slid out of that top ten to 11th Dudley, and I think that, uh, you know, when you got a guy like Jesse, Yes, it looks like Keith has a huge lead right now over Mark Schilling. Mark was down in the standings a little bit. Jesse was not that far behind Keith coming in. He only has one bass in the box, a little over a pound right now. So a lot to grow on for Jesse to tighten that gap up. Nick Pravonizak, all these guys, there were three or four within striking distance. So Keith only I sitting on unofficially 12 pounds, 15 ounces right now. Still anybody's ball game, in my opinion, early in the day. It is, but I, I got to lay some blame on the weather, Luke. It, it, you know, we watched the swim jiggers yesterday. We watched David Gass and we watched Jimmy Millsaps come in with huge bags. I talked to other anglers who got on that swim jig bite. And in order for a swim jig to excel, you need that clarity. You need that little bit – a lot of those bites are chasing them down. They're seeing it come from a distance away. And you take that two inches of rain that we had last night, muddy up the water. You've already heard them say, hey, this area is a lot muddier than I thought it was. 
those bass are not tracking it down like they were yesterday. And after getting close to the midway point today, I'm going to have to throttle back. I'm going to have to throttle back and go more with the flipping bite today because the water clarity is not lending itself for the swim jig to perform at its peak level. Uh, there's still going to be some people catch them on it, but I think you're going to have to bring that right over their nose, run it into their face before they can even have a chance to do it. I'm surprised we're not seeing more spinnerbait action. That's something that gives a lot more, you know, thump and some flash, but hopefully we'll see that come into play here soon. Over to Robbie Frazier. Doing some of that flipping we've seen so much of this week, but slowing down. Still looks like he's in the jungle. Does he have shorts over top of pants? Or is that his bibs? I think his bib. Oh. I was about it to say. It could be breakaway pants. No, that's uh, that's I'm bibs. Sure. From a distance, I'm like, my man put shorts on over top of his leg pants. <laughs> The only trendsetter we've seen so far this week at what? the MPFL is you with those glasses. <laughs> and that won't even me. That was Daryl. Daryl Lyons. It's the only drip we've seen so far. We ought to get a slow-mo of me putting them things on. For, for your TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Robbie just, every time we've seen him, very methodical. Robbie's a veteran tournament angler. From Alabama, he's fished so many events throughout the country. Well versed in a lot of techniques. But you're noticing these Alabama boys, these Tennessee boys, Florida boys, they like picking apart this shallow cover. And I, I want to uh, give you an uh, an idea. See him continuing to pitch at the base of that uh, tree in front of him. I, I can't quite tell if it's a it, probably a willow tree. But he knows, spawn, fish that spawn, they like to spawn right at the base of the tree. And you watched him make multiple, multiple pitches towards that one tree. That is him processing in his mind, there could be a spawner right there. A lot of times in buck, when you, when you talk about a buck bush or a willow tree, the limbs and the overhanging limbs of a willow tree, actually you can you can decipher what fish is at what stage on one willow tree. So think about this. If you flip where the limbs are overhanging and you catch one, you know, at just flipping out there, that is a pre-spawn or a post-spawn fish. If you flip to the base of that willow tree, you let it sit, and all of a sudden it goes, tink, you can assume that is a spawner. So him taking the time and fishing that one tree right there, fishing it very methodically, giving it three or four pitches. I can't remember how many he gave it. But even within bushes, you have pre-spawn, post-spawn, just by where they're sitting at in the tree. You can't assume just because you got bit in a tree, that's a spawner. Buck bushes, willow trees, they're actually famous for pre- and post-spawners. Buck bushes are hard for bass to get in and make a bed at, uh, around. When you have like a hardwood tree or the base, tree, like he was throwing at one, you know, hard piece of cover, they get around that to spawn. But a lot of your willow tree bites are typically pre or post spawn unless it's near the trunk. That's one double D, the instructor. That's one way to to tell. The, the sheer number of bites you're, you're getting, you can pretty much tell what stage you're in by uh, where you're getting bit at in that particular cover. Good stuff from the double D right there as we watch Robbie Frazier here on Wright Patman Lake, which has no shortage of shoreline cover shallow water fishing opportunities. Really couldn't have hit it at a better time of the year for the MPFL anglers. It's been a great week here in the city of Texarkana.
one thing that I'm going to say has been a common theme of the top 10. Let me ask you this. Of the top 10, how many hard bank line fishermen have we seen? I'm going to say, you know, quite a few of them. Yeah. What, what well, you I say, say half. Yeah. Right. Like actually get to that hard bank line. Mm -hmm. Where you're seeing it. You right know. here with Joel Willard, we're seeing it. Mm -hmm. And he's moved about 10 feet from the last time we've seen him. And he said he spent about four hours on this stretch yesterday. Slow. Just flipping every piece of cover. Oof, I saw that bite. <laughs> it's no time getting that sucker in the in the boat. Add it to the live well. Hitch GoPro. Don't forget that. Yeah, he's got to mark his clip for the sickness YouTube channel. Seeing that measuring board a lot more today, 14. Dudley. Mm -hmm. A lot more. Mm -hmm. Of course, all the bass the have these guys small. bring to the scales have to reach a minimum of 14 inches. Before. Joel catches one and does not pick up the poles. Dudley just goes right back to that same little corner. And Should I be you know in the back in, of his mind, he's thinking the, uh, male female. Track? Okay. I'll do that real quick. Yes, you should. In the Way Live app, you should be doing that. Wow. Joel gives us an update. We're going to look at Nick Pravonizak, who seems to be being attacked by murder hornets right now. But it works for him. There you go. Definitely. I don't know what that dance was. That log. And uh, this fish ate it off the log. Oh, so he was. was huh? I think that one's going to make it, Luke. I got two fried green tomatoes up, uh, appetizers up on you. Want to go double or nothing? <laughs> you know, Dudley, I'm, I'm game. All right. Nick unofficially sitting on the zero bass so far this morning and there's that measuring board once again let's go nick let's go <laughs> put him in the live well nick put him in the live well bam barely made it three fried green tomato appetizers is on the way these are accu calls they're really good call clips they don't put pressure on the jaw but they lock in there Struggling a little bit today, size-wise, but we know he'll put it together, and we'll get to watch it all go down on MPFL Live. Thanks to our sponsors. And we are going to pay some bills, and we'll be back in a couple minutes with more MPFL Live from Wright Patman, presented by Progressive Insurance. Yeah, we are. Yeah. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. <sighs> Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. Ooh. Yeah, I doubt that exists. The bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. 
Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFO. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started, and now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. Fullyloadedchew.com, check it out. Welcome back to MPFL Live. Godfather's Pizza. It's actually pretty good. Looking at Derek Blake, the Tennessee angler. Yeah. Started Taco. out the day in eighth place. I'm going to take it over here. Um, I, I wouldn't mind trying it. I'm going to a taco pizza salad. Oh, he is now, he's going to take a little move and not pull his trolling motor up, though, Dudley. A little dangerous on that. Here is our current leader, Keith Carson. He's been quiet for a little while. Haven't got to see Keith in a little bit. Jumped on top of the leaderboard day one and refuses to give up that top spot. Oops. Standing on the trail. <laughs> Familiar sight for Keith this week. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's a good one. Stay on, baby. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, another fish. Okay, it's not a giant. Dudley from Keith Carson. Fish, though. That's, a, that's probably, a, probably about a three. Oh, yes. Thank you. All right. We are going to put this fish. Um, let me put this fish on float number four here. Well, the yes. Best fish we've seen anybody in our that's field huge. so far, but we that's know. That's huge. Those That's six three, and seven three pounders are out there being caught. Fish that I have now. Let me take all of these. We out. got a seven pounder out there. Unofficial. Okay. Unofficially, unofficial. Right. Official. So let's see. He, he's the biggest of these three, for sure. So, number one, is uh, let me set these down here, so he can go back. This will be my fourth largest now. You gotta put those fish on a balance beam. Every ounce matters. All right, Down so number here. two is bigger. So number two, number two goes back, but he goes next. How do you release these things? Oh, there we go. Just slowly there chipping away at it. You get that feeling, Dudley. Tougher Sweet. day. You know, I think I, think I just He's figured out. closer and closer. Or not figured out. It's something I've known this whole time. But, you know, I need to stay within the first, like, 50 yards of the mouth. We lost Keith there. Some of these great bass fisheries do have spotty service, unfortunately. Hopefully we can get back to Keith, but over to Brandon Perkins. 
Started the day in sixth place. Brandon, one of our anglers that headed into our fourth stop of the year, Pickwick Lake in July, will be one of the favorites. Brandon hooked up. Dang. I choked him. He needs a grab ball. <laughs> not, not the size we've seen this uh, week. Put it in your pocket is what they're saying. <laughs> if I had some Duke's mayonnaise and some bread, we could have done some good with that. So little fish sandwich action. I'm, I'm getting bites on this blade, which makes total sense with the wind blowing. Um, and I'm, t I've, I'm confident that any minute one of them's going to be a big one. Too many fish wanting it. But golly, they're babies. I mean, like that one, sandwich. No, that one's not coming out either. Right in a fork. I don't even know if I can get my trolling motor up there either. We're, we're still on. Okay. We're still on. Yeah, we'll see if I can get my trolling motor up there. These guys fishing so shallow this week. Trolling motor's shallow. raised. Shallower water. Is oh, that is forked like three Brandon times. Calls it. <laughs> oh crap! I saw a look at his blade oh, earlier. He he's actually typically typically you put a red kicker blade on early him. spring, like it's something about red, and then after that. And then after the spring, you don't see much of it anymore. Interesting that he's using a red kicker blade this late in the spring. Going in, baby. You know, Dudley, something I always think about is some of these bass boats, $80,000, tons of equipment, and we will absolutely just go into the cover for a three, four, five dollar bait. <laughs> it's confidence, man. Mm. Got to get it back. That's a Joe Willard. Oh my oh. gosh, he came off. Oof. A miss from Jay Willie. Not sure what he's throwing. I, I mean, of course. Almost looks like a swim jig. Definitely retrieving something. If I had to guess, is probably what it. You saw him with a spinner bait early, but then he really slowed down flipping. So, do you think those demons are kind of getting to him, Dudley? Hey, you need to move around. Fishing too slow. Showdown Saturday. I actually think, yeah, I can go with that. It, it's getting demon time. <laughs> Closer you get to that 11 o'clock hour, you're like, I wonder Ugh. if we call it demon. We, we need a coma. I like that. The demon hour? When the the demon come. hour. To me, those demons always come in at like 2 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> when you don't have anything and you're like, what am I going to tell my dad? <laughs> we going to call that him. the demon hour. The demon hour. Got to get those demons out of the boat. Get the bass in those live wells. He's definitely covering water, and I think can't get a, a great look at it, but either a swim jig or a vibrating jig. For sure. And I think the reason we can't, it's got to be a dark colored or a green pumpkin color. We're losing it in the, but either way, you can. But slow. Curious that, you know, coming up, see that lay down tree? You would think that's going to be like, oh, yeah, that, this going to be automatic. And it's so crazy how early spring, like in the heat of the spawn, lay down trees really aren't a factor until post spawn. You know, they they start getting back around them in post spawn, pre and post, but during the spawn, it's like whoop, void. Oh, 
Uh oh. Looks like we've got some. Todd, it's Texarkana Todd. Pirates coming up on Jesse Mills' house, but maybe. Oh, no, they're friendly. Uh, okay. At ease, Jesse. Hey, modern day. Out uh, there having a time. Modern day Pirates out there. Jesse just waving at the locals. Wishing the local bass would join him for a party right now. Jesse unofficially right now in 12th place, but started our day in second. Huge charge yesterday up the leaderboard. Did a lot of his damage early, but then made a late day call. He was telling me in a new area, was able to catch another five pounder late to get him to that 23 pound mark Dudley. And Put on a show at the drive through We in. Jesse's one of my favorite anglers out here. Always smiling. Loves bass fishing. I'd like for him to prove me wrong right now. But when you're dealing with waves crashing in that hard on that shallow of a bush, I want him to prove me wrong. You're saying you don't like that. Mm -hmm. you, that's not a situation. Look, you, you see him just measure measure the depth right there. Even he's doubting in his head. You know, you could tell. I think that's why he has scurried on up the the bank there for sure. He knows what he's looking for, guys. You can you can watch in his actions. He's pretty well zoned in. He knows what he's looking for, and he's not seeing what he wants. Because he's passing what would look like a lot of good cover, but no doubt his eyes are zoned in. Dudley, you mentioned it earlier, but a lot less chatter on showdown Saturday. Yes, they are. For all of our anglers focused. And we will all be waiting to see what happens at that drive through way in this afternoon. Of course, all the anglers. We're supposed to be logging in their guest weights to the Way Live app. So you can keep up with that over at tnpfl.com. But let's take a look at that unofficial leaderboard here at the 1030 mark on Showdown Saturday. Several hours of fishing left. But so far, Keith Carson staying on top. Sheldon Collings making a huge jump. Today, he, he has second place. Hard. I mean, he has been on a hard charge. Saw the same from him yesterday. Mm -hmm. Tied for 11th coming into the day, but has rocketed up to second place. Mark Schilling, Brian Hatfield, William Fletcher, Eddie Carper, Randy Crawl, Brendan Perkins, Cody Ryan Graney, a Texas angler who weighed a 20 pound stringer yesterday to vault up the standings right now, four for 814. And Josh McDermott. 
Angler we covered on day one, Indiana Angler with an estimated 16 pound, seven ounce mm. bag. One of our biggest bags of the day unofficially right now on the Way Live leaderboard. And Dudley, two tournaments going on really in one, the chase for this trophy, the $50,000 that comes with first place, but we are gonna pay $9,000 down to 36th place. And right now that spot is occupied by Taylor Watkins. Got Chad Aaron. Marsburg, Tennessee angler in 35th right now. And that weight, 36 pounds, 15 ounces around that check line for three days. Of course, all these weights are unofficial. Dudley, someone I see climbing the unofficial leaderboard today, who was the bubble boy on the check cut yesterday, but is unofficially in 23rd place right now, Mr. Lunkers TV himself, Robert Turkla. I just saw that. He's got three quality or three quality bass. And, and I spoke Shows to him. Shows a six-pound big bass there. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him coming into this event, and I asked him how, you know, how he felt. And he was, he said, I feel good. I'm in the state of Texas, and I have been getting plenty of bites. Back over to our leader, Keith Carson. He's been getting more bites than everybody. <laughs> Quality bites, anyways, this week. If you're just joining us for the first time here on live, Keith utilizing a one ounce weight, flipping a crawl style bait, has flapping legs, and is flipping fast but slow, if that makes sense. He's covering a lot of water, keying on isolated targets, alternating between that and chatterbait. Saw him do a lot of damage on a chatterbait. I think that's what we're getting to look out now. A little vibrating jig action from Keith Carson. Oh my gosh. I don't know what that was. I saw that bite. Just see Keith constantly making adjustments. So many lessons to be learned here, Dudley. Hard bank, though. Common theme with him, and of course, he's our leader. We've got to watch him quite a bit. Hard bank. And really less, co less cover in mm, most yes. of his areas mm -hmm. every single time. But I see him right here, Dudley to me, taking advantage of the wind. A lot of guys have complained about the wind. It's blowing out my area. Keith is fishing a wind-blown bank. And I've heard you say this before, Dudley, trying to catch a liar. Yep. That wind will put the bait fish up there, put the bass up there, and here today, gone tomorrow a lot of times. Yes. Liars are <laughs> typically weather-related, you know, conditional-related no matter if it, it could be sun, it could be rain, it could be wind. Uh, but in in the fishing world, yes, uh, we like to refer to them as liars. But you got to keep those liars honest, d even during competition. You don't you don't play much. You don't put much uh, emphasis on them during practice. Maybe just to get a little idea of what of a few liars that you could catch. But to run around and catch liars all day typically is not going to uh, do you any good for what's to come three days from that moment. So that's fishing the moment, though. Mm -hmm. That's fishing instinct. That's what we're seeing here with Keith. But it's enough, but you do want to toy with it in practice just to get a little bit of confidence, you know, in that regard of, of uh, in case it's during the tournament and you have to go catch some liars. Liars are good. They can weigh very well. <laughs> That's right. But you just have to know that they are liars. That you could come back tomorrow and yeah, well, yeah. they could break your heart. Yeah, absolutely. They have broken my my my, my heart. Looks like <laughs> freaking got lion crushed, <laughs> been all through kind of stuff. It's crazy that, that a little green bass can do that, but to a grown man. We mm -hmm. see it a lot. And, of course, we cover – the top 10 here on MPFL Live, but we have 104 anglers this week out here on Wright Patman. All the 104 are fishing today. No cuts in the MPFL. I love it. Everybody gets a chance. So say you were outside of check range after day two, they're not sending you home empty-handed. You get to fight. You got to fight. That's right, fight for your right. For your right. For a paycheck. To get a paycheck. <laughs> Dudley coming in. Coming in hot. Karaoke. <laughs> I like it. But you do. How did I do on the voice there, Luke? 
How did I do on the voice there? Um, how did I do, Simon? Hmm. Simon Cowell. I've seen better, but it was it was it, the the enthusiasm was there. I'll say that. It was coke uh, karaoke probably quality long gone. at the yes. Yeah. Okay, let's make a move. Keith Carson's going to make a move here. You see him just kind of testing testing the waters, trying new things, seeing if the fish have changed with these conditions. Instinct being the key to Keith's week. He's been moving and shaking the entire time. Over to an angler that has you guys stand right in made a can. lot of moves this week. <gasps> He's his line. I bet you. I don't know if he's still on. Great stuff <laughs> right there. Broke my line. Way up. Wow. That was interesting. Heads up play from Joe Willard right there. It looks like something I would do. Good stuff right there. Any short, anyhow. Mm. Oh, no. 13 and 7 Not eight. a keeper for Joel. Not a keeper for Joel. Lost Joel there. Back over to Chris Heath. Start of the day in tenth place. Got Chris sitting on one fish on the way live unofficial leaderboard right now, 32nd place. Of course, like we've mentioned so many times, the top 36 is going to take home money. It's very important to stay in that top 36. Everybody's just so lockjawed today, Dudley. So this intense is, on this final day. It's like the, de you know, it's almost like depression is in there. Right. <laughs> That's right. D depression slash focus, I think. It's a combination here. Mm -hmm. The bites have definitely slowed down. For our top ten here today. They need a shot of Red Bull. Is what they need. <laughs> Come on, girls. Time to play. Let's go, girls. Please. Man, what a day. It's been super, super tough. Five shorts, one keeper. <clears throat> Switched up things, went to flipping a beaver and caught a bunch of shorts. So. Had to go big or go home with my jig and hope they turn on sometime between now and 4.30. Chris talking about I the think long some of the day. Folks who've gotten here, Ranger Mercury, Power Pole, Gusta Marine, Zoom Baits, uh, my boys, John, and Will, Greenfish Tackle. My wife who lets me come out and do what I like to do and don't complain. And my boys at Mount Vintage who's been watching me every afternoon. Hopefully sometime today, 
we'll give them a show, but so far this this conditions has really changed from yesterday. All that storms are blew through. Water's fluctuating some. Dirtied up three of my places and uh, trashed them. So we're stuck here just flipping and flipping and flipping. But again, super, super tough for me today. But again, still early. Yesterday about this time I had about seven and a half pounds. So good news is when they bite this jig, they're usually really good fish. So. Little surprised he hasn't switched up from the jig, Luke. That's a good thing. And he was bad talking thing there. About he had jig. Jig to the wood, but changed to a beaver some, but got some small bites Skip flipping jig in. From green fish, and the jig is <laughs> every now and then you'll get, get just caught his, up in wood. Just his confidence. This is jam. <laughs> green and that fish right there is jig. why I don't like to throw a jig. Hung up. But I'm going to say. I'm sure somebody's catching, but it's not going to be a slow fest like it was yesterday and the day before. I promise you that. Out of all the lures we have, Luke, what do you think is the top in, big bass catcher of all time? Got a wood keeper. You, we got to put it in front of four more. Yeah. And we'll be all right. Keep us way up there in the points and get us a nice check to take on. But you hear it all the time. People are like, oh, you get to go fish for a week. Man, that's got to be great. Well, get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, fish in the dark. Water was up. Now the water's down. Now it's coming back up. <laughs> it was dirty. Then it cleared up. Then it get dirty again. It's a, it's a challenge for sure. But that's why we do it. Lot slower day for Chris Heath and a lot of our anglers out here on Wright Patman. Of course, in general, Dudley, I always feel like Saturdays are a little tougher. It's like the fish know. True that. Seems to be the case most of the time. But I'm glad to get to watch all this amazing live coverage here from our anglers at Wright Patman. We gotta pay some bills right now, Dudley. We're gonna take a break from the live action and we'll be back in just a few short minutes with more National Professional Fishing League Live presented by Progressive. <laughs> Omega products are built by fishermen for fishermen. We set out to build the best vibrating jig on the market. The blending of high-end components, a detailed assembly process, and a burning desire to achieve perfection are the pillars of the Rapture bait. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. The Rapture was no different. Countless hours of testing and retesting. The result? 
a vibrating jig that hunts, hooks, and catches bass like no other. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. Yeah, I doubt that exists. The bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFO. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started. And now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free, so you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. FullyLoadedChew.com. Check it out. Welcome back to Wright Patman here in the city of Texarkana, Texas. Been a great host this week for the National Professional Fishing League, our second event here out of a six event tournament trail that will see us go. Next down to Leesburg, Florida, the Harris Chain of Lakes, then over to Pickwick Lake, then up to Wisconsin to Lake Winnebago and wrap up our regular season at Grand Lake in Oklahoma. So the guy that wins that Progressive Angler of the Year, Dudley, is going to earn it. A lot of different fisheries at different times of the year. What what fishery of the lakes that you just mentioned, What which one do you are you looking forward to? Now, they're all tremendous lakes. Absolutely. But – of the fisheries that we're going to next, which one is your top lake that you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Harris Chain because a lot of professional tournament trails have obviously fished that, but we're going at the first week of June. It's a different time of year. Looking forward to Pickwick, which is my home lake, but July is typically not when you see professional tournaments come there. But I think out of the ones that are left, Winnebago is a big question mark for me. You know, not not a lot of professional tournament history up there, and I think it's going to be a good lake, but a challenging lake for our anglers. You sure? I think fat. Winnebago. Look right here. Getting the measure board out for Jesse Millsaps. Keeper number two. Pound and a half. Jesse Millsaps, keeper number two. A far cry from what we saw Jesse do yesterday. 23 pound stringer to rock it into second place. That fish right done was a good sign though. A lot slower day. What I seen that fish uh -oh. do. What did that one do that was different? That fish, that fish actually, I drove my bait over a limb and I watched him come get it. That means they're starting to be a little more aggressive. They yeah, might so start chasing a little bit, chasing a little bit more now. Cause I watched him come eat it. I watched that fish roll on it and get it. Jesse talking there thinks the fish might be starting to warm up a little bit this morning. That bite was a little more aggressive. Two 
two bites we've had down that one stretch. The wind, the wind may be making them where they're getting more aggressive. We gotta put that fish in the score tracker. We're gonna go anyway. I'll put him in. Jesse's gonna make a move and enter that in the way live out. Thankful for all of our anglers that do enter weights in the Way Live app. Oh, Somebody shook up our unofficial leaderboard yesterday. David Gaston started the day okay. in fifth oh, place man. on the strength of a 22 pound bag. Oh, working on my fifth fish. Had some bites. They ain't had really none to eat it good enough to say you could have caught them. So. It is what it is. And I want to cut this guy off. I gotta go all the way <laughs> over here. This wind needs to die down for sure. I don't even know if it's supposed to today. I hope it's gonna do this all day or what. Conditions changing again out there. That wind, northwest wind. Picking up Dudley. As we go along. Got like a four pounder here the first day on this island, somewhere around it. I think it was on the point. Right now, just looking at the weather, Dudley. I mean, this water is absolutely miles per hour out of the, out the out northwest. Rain last night. I mean, you know, yesterday mm. it had a tint to it, stained. You know, you could see sandy spots where it looks like they could have been bedding. Now you can't see. Crap. You your at all? No, I ain't going to. It don't need to be changed up any. It's just need to fish it better is all. You know, they still going to bite. And braid is not supposed to break. Reach in here and get some of the, the goods. I mean, I have been swimming a jig, you know, yesterday. Caught them all swimming a jig and I'm going to catch them all today, swim that jig. That's the only thing I'm going to do. That's the one. Big old nasty bulky skirt on it. One of these little blue. No, know David really well. and He pretty much just swims the jig everywhere he goes, no matter what he's facing. Probably the whole with. thing on there. When you got this big old skirt, nasty, it slows it a little bit better. I want to hang out just enough to kick around. Yesterday I caught him on a lighter head. First day I caught him on a half. Yesterday I caught him on a quarter. That water cleared up and you had to, you know, fish it a little bit slower and they weren't exactly killing it. But today, it's like you're gonna have to fish a heavier head and keep your eye on it the best you can because it's got a little muddier. Which that's usually a good thing because it'll make them hey, look at Robbie Frazier hooked up. NPFL live. Right Patman. A good You gotta be kidding me, come on. This is when your heart is pacing. <laughs> there you go. Robbie Frazier, Alabama angler. I would say that boy wanted it. No doubt about it. Robbie made a big move into our top 10 yesterday. Steadily moved up the unofficial leaderboard all day. Ended the day in seventh place to the drive through way in. Michael Yoder is now on three. He's sitting right at seven pounds. I talked to him yesterday, and he said he had caught around 30 keepers yesterday, just no big ones. A little shocked he doesn't. 
five. So one of our anglers that we mentioned earlier, we haven't been able to cover as much Dudley. He's been out of service, yeah. but our man, Fat Cat Newton, caught up with fourth place yeah. angler to start the day. Josh Ray from Arkansas. Let's go to the big cat for a Fat Cat on the water update. All right, folks, here we are with that Saturday showdown on the water coverage of that Wright Patman Texarkana, Texas National Professional League stop number two presented by Progressive. We're in the back of Heron Creek with one of our leaders, Josh Ray. He rolled out this morning sitting in fourth place. He's back here, zero coverage, real spotty. He's back in the guts of Wright Patman. We're in the back of this creek where there's not a whole lot of current going on is real silty not a lot of movement and we just watched him he's, he's being very meticulous he's got one in the boat right now at 283 we just saw him sit in one spot he flipped it then he picked up his frog threw his frog and he picked up a swim jig and threw a swim jig he's just picking this apart and we got talking about the fish he's been catching he said through here he's been catching some little ones and he's been catching big ones and he said man i really lost some big ones and that has been a reoccurring theme up in here everybody's losing big belly kelly i'm like man what do you attribute it to why do you think you're losing them he said man they're just built different he said these fish are stout he's like when you see that fish and you think oh it's about two pounds you put it on the scales it's three these fish are all gut no butt they're just they got shoulders and they are mean as fire he said he's going to fish here a while doesn't get this he's going to go to one more spot that's his juice and if they're not home he said he's going to run and look for new water he said man i was like what are you worried about doing today are you worried about making a cut or winning he's like i'm in it to win it he said, like, i think if i get 23 24 pounds i can win this thing he said in order to get that check i just need another fish and i got a check so josh ray is in it to win it he's just looking for that that fully loaded live well so back to you guys in the studio man we'll see you soon <laughs> Good stuff Ooh, right bite, there bite. from the big cat. Josh Ray. And that notorious fat cat laugh, I don't know how to take it when it's quiet. <laughs> yes. Try not to disturb the angler, but when he gets the laugh in there. When he gave the halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where is That's a pro. Where is my fat cat at? Yeah, that's right. He's scared of spooking one of these shallow water fish. You mean with his lungs, the fish could hear him? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I do think so. You can hear him talking about... Talking about Josh Ray, who's been absolutely, he's been hidden all week, but Dudley, we're glad to get to see him as we head into our 11 o'clock hour. Still a lot of fishing left to go on Showdown Saturday here at Wright Patman Lake, Dudley. But it's turning out to be the Keith Carson Show, just like we figured it would be here on Showdown Saturday. But Keith distancing himself more and more and more as the day goes on. But William Fletcher, William Fletcher has made yet another move unofficially right now in second place. But Dudley, I mean, a lot slower start for Keith overall. He did most of his 25-pound damage the first day before lunch. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, most of the 22 pounds before lunch. He hasn't been keying in on what you've called the afternoon delight. Now, for the rest of our field, when we go off live coverage every afternoon, it looks like the way live leaderboard just goes crazy. So do you think we're still going to see that today? But you got to remember, though, when you are sitting on 25 pounds by 10 o'clock, you're brrr. You're throttling that's right. back, that's right? That's right. So practice he, mode. Yes, he's going to be in that window, setting the hook as many times as he can. So 
I'm just going to say by the end of the day, I think that lead might be stretched a little bit more. Now, William Fletcher, I'm looking at him. I know him very well. I know he is a retrieve type of guy. And looking at him sitting in second, Sheldon Collins is a flipper from Andy Morgan School. No doubt. So, you know, I'm looking at the top ten right now and definitely a little bit slower today. It's pretty obvious that the fish have been picked on pretty pretty good through uh up to this point but i still say somewhere on this lake if somebody can get the nerve and just pull their trolling motor up and say i'm going to a different area maybe the dumbest area of the lake <laughs> you know what i mean but where somewhere that hasn't been ha- pressured hasn't yes. been pressured maybe and, it doesn't look as good uh-huh and there's an area where those big females are still sitting around those bushes and they can be caught and they can make a huge charge towards the end, but it's going to take some uh, – <laughs> I got ready to say balls. but <laughs> Serious weight. It's, it's going to take it, some serious weight. And what we've seen overall from an average, four-pounders, five-pounders, six-pounders, all week long, they're out here. A guy pulls up on the right stretch and is able to connect and get – those fish in the boat, we've heard so many lost fish stories. Mm-hmm. But I still think somebody that was in our top five yesterday of Jesse Millsaps and Nick Provanza, if they can land on the right stretch with the weight they had coming into today, they can give Keith a run. Mm-hmm. But they better get to catching them. Yes. It, you, you, hey, we're coming up on the 11th clock hour. And granted, th- some of these guys are going to be fishing till the 430 mark. That is still a lot of time for the afternoon Absolutely. delight. There's still a lot of time. And, you know, th- we're looking at unofficially a seven-pounder right now is the top at the uh, Big Bass as of right now. We've heard it. And we have definitely seen the quality here, but we have not seen the big females. Could it be the afternoon delight where they just magically pop up? Could be, but I still it's going to take somebody with a lot of courage and a lot of heart and say, you know what, I'm pulling this up. And we've watched Keith Carson do it three day, basically three days in a row. Relatively, he was in the same area, but not over the same stretch. So hopefully we're going to see that here soon and watch somebody climb the leaderboard. That's what's so interesting about this game. Absolutely, it is. And a guy that made a big charge yesterday, we're seeing him in the dual box right now, David Gaston. Nice fish from David Gaston right there, who we just saw make an adjustment just a few minutes ago. He he talks about, hey, I, I swam a quarter-ounce jig yesterday, so dialed on the mm-hmm. swim jig game, but I swam a quarter-ounce jig now the water's dirtier. I want to be able to fish it faster, so he's throwing that half ounce so he can work it fast, keep his eye on it, makes a change, and boom, right there, David Gaston. And he's one of those guys, and I'm saying if he hits the right stretch, he's within striking distance, could give Keith a run for his money. I don't think it's anywhere near over yet. Keith estimated right now at 14 pounds, and he thought he needed at least 18, 18. to put it away. Mm-hmm. You can look over his uh, shoulder right there. You're starting to see that hard shade line. That right there is what he's been talking about. He wants that shade line. It's going to position him right where he wants him to be a be at. Absolutely. A lot better than than they were yesterday for sure. My goodness. Was that you jumping her? No, that's what I fell over though. I know. I thought she was wobbling on me. I guess we had a stump. Well, I'll tell you what, if I'd have lost my camera, man, that'd be pretty embarrassing, wouldn't it? The worst thing. <laughs> worst things yeah. that could happen. You don't happen. want that invoice, yeah, like that David. I'd have to pay for it. <laughs> Hope they got insurance. Oh, they do. They got progressive. Oh, that will be invoiced. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, company man, I like that. Pour Thanks, David. Pour some change, probably. Yeah, he was on a bush. Out here on these bushes. I'm trying to get this. I mean, if you don't get this perfect. It was like a pre-spawn, post-spawn, male, female? It was spawn or whatever it was. It was, it was a female. She looks like she was post-spawn, but she was, man, she was fresh and pretty. That's what I'll get. It's like she come up in bed. She could have did it last night. Pulled up on that bush, but 
I could have did it a minute ago. But man, she was just, that tail was nasty. I don't want to say she was spawned out by the way she ate it. I mean, she come up and sucked it like she was on the bed. And I caught a six right there yesterday. So that could have been the buck. That's a big old buck to be catching. I can hear that grease bubbling now. Gonna have fried fish for dinner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the cameraman's gonna have a fish fry depending on how good we do today. <laughs> if we do really good, we'll have enough to, to weigh in and have a fish fry. Tell the folks at home, just hey, meet us at the hotel parking lot, just bring the hush puppies and fries. We got the fish. There he is, offshore. There he is, Hunter, making a move. And he said he had found some brush piles in practice, but was going to focus on flipping, but it looks like he slid off the bank. I wonder if Hunter is invited to the after party that David Gaston and the cameraman were planning. Mm, possibly. After the party, it's the hotel lobby. David Gaston said it right there. Mm -hmm. Hunter, who cashed a check down at Ufala, one of our most – Amazing anglers out here, man. Caught him flipping yesterday. Had a lot better day. Moved up in the standings. But told me he found with his Garmin Live Scope several brush piles in practice, but was convinced a lot of the fish that he was seeing on Panoptics were crappie. This lake is notorious. I heard of crappie. some big ones being caught in practice, too. Uh, you know, crappie. Hunter unofficially in 57th place right now. No fish in the live well, according to the Way Live app. Unofficial leaderboard, which can be found on our website, tnpfl.com, if you want to take a look at that. It's going to show you estimated big bass for each angler. Their overall estimated weight for the day where they're at in the standings. You can just hear that wind. Getting more and more straight line out of the northwest. Chris Heath started the day in 10th. Looks like we got a big cat update. The fat cat. All right, folks, Newton. here we are, right Patman Lake. It's getting to be that. You talk about a Saturday showdown. We're in a wild, wild west, and high noon is here. Sheldon Collins said, I'm the new sheriff in town. He's on them. He's running a pattern. He said, that, that storm coming in, all this wind and everything, and all the pressure going on in these bushes, he decided today, with everything going on, he went shallow early. Flipping. Caught a couple little ones flipping. He said the quality went away, so he picked up that swim jig. White chartreuse swim jig. Started chunking the swim jig. Six pounder, five and a half pounder. He said everyone that's hitting that swim jig is healthy. So he's like, just pulled up on him, talking to him about what he's gonna do. He's like, ah, it doesn't look good here. I said, well, Bobby, what are you looking for? What looks good? Wind blown points. He said he thinks that the big females have moved out to those windblown points because everybody's beating them shallow bushes up. Kind of like Jake Paul when he fights a real fighter is going to get beat up. But he's working it, man. He just said that, that that's what's gonna, what it's going to take is that swim jig. And fast, he is cold straight burning. Watch him work that swim jig. I got a good feeling when we get up here to this point, he's going to just – Jack jaws, cross eyes. The placement. He puts that swim jig wherever he wants it. Look at that. Okay, maybe not that one. Just skips it. That nice, subtle, smooth presentation. Look at that, dude.
right where he wants it. He said he's got two small ones in the live well. He said that's, he's just chunking and winding, just trying to get them two dinks out of there. and Get two fatties up in the live well. He wants that fully loaded live well. That's what he's looking for, ladies and gentlemen. I will say today, out of all three days of the tournament, is... Is is it's a different lake almost. Between the wind has completely shifted. It's 180 degrees. It's been coming out of the south. Now it's coming out of the north. We're post frontal. Yesterday we were low pressure. Today we're high pressure. Bluebird skies. We've had cloud cover all week. Not today, folks. I oh, mean, that's, that's a bad man. He did say something earlier. He was up by the bridge, and there was a guy up there on rollerblades with no shirt on eating a corn dog. Said he was looking for a guy named Zach Visser, which is weird because we don't have anybody like that fishing this tournament. Yes. We're, we're, no, I, it's a crazy story. We got to tell the world. I, it's, it's weird. So if you guys keep your eyes open for anything like that. Right here's gonna be a fish. He's on this point, this is where the fish have been. We're gonna see a good fish right here. Oh boy. He got hung up right here on the juice. Oh, there we go. That's how it goes. He said, it seems like it always happens. Get to that good spot and get hung up. That's okay. He recovered well. It was funny. We did the round table the other night with Sheldon. He's as smooth as molasses. Just sat back in his chair talking, full of confidence. He's a young man, but he's been doing this for a long time. It's in his blood. But he had a good little tagline. He said, I jerk on everything. Hook sets are free. see too many guys with a swim jig putting over Sheldon Collins puts it. I mean, he burns that, that, that swim jig. He just burns it. All right, folks, so here's the deal. Like I say, new body of water. Sheldon's on a roll. You've got guys up the river 
that are doing things a little bit different. I will say this. So we were upriver at the bridge, and over there it's not that bad. When we came, we cut through from that side. There's a little slough you can slide through. When we came out and hit the big lake, it was like a new body of water. We were hitting about one foot chops. Like it's, the wind could play a factor. Like I said, he's fishing wind blowing points. The water is a little bit rougher than what it was yesterday. The water level is still dropping. It's, it's going to be an interesting tournament. It's not over yet because a lot of the guys seems like they had been catching their fish early. Doesn't seem to be the case as much for the third day. So I think like we're going to see that last hour of today. They're going to show out. I truly believe that we're going to see the biggest fish of the tournament come in today, without a doubt. I think Sheldon might be the one to do it. Oh. All right, folks, let's check out some highlights. What areas that I'm going to go, go into before it's over, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay the course out here for a little bit and see if, see if I can put this together, man. I mean... All we need is one bite like that, probably in every hour for the rest of the day. I don't need a hundred bites. Well, 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 Dudley. I just need I four just more saw like you that. perk up. And uh, we'll get us a good top 10. We got Spotlock competing with the power poles yep. up here. You <laughs> the throwing motor running. <laughs> oh it's my like John's gosh. doing some re rigging after just catching one. Kind of Our first look at through. John. Hook up, soak up. Oh. Hey. There we go. It's a team effort. I know you want to see fish catches too. Some more cameraman angler love. Troll motors. <laughs> Mad, it's like a racehorse. It's like, let me go. Good night, dude. He ripped out of there. Looking at our bass tank up pro John Sukup, which tells me there's other hookups. Right so we must be in a feed. Bass tank, of course, so one of the fine sponsors of the MPFL. Oh, no. And we're going to take a look at some of those other fine sponsors right now. Take a quick commercial break, and we areas. will be back. We'll jump these little points for more MPFL live. Stay with the point system. Maybe fish up and down. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. <sighs> Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. <clears throat> like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I doubt that exists. It's a bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm super progressive and I can help over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League. And I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFL. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started. And now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco-free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at FullyLoadedChew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. FullyLoadedChew.com, check it out. Four and five eight. Oh, 
Hey there folks, what's shaking? Fat Cat Newton coming at you from Texarkana here at the Running WJ Ranch with my girl Brittany. Brittany's gonna give you the down low and tell you how special this place is and why it's so special. So we are so thankful that y'all are here this morning. Um, this morning the guys from the NPFL are walking with our kids. And what we do here is we offer uh, therapeutic horseback riding for special needs kids and adults in our uh, community. We have uh, 40 to 50 kids this year because of COVID, um, but we're so thankful for the ones that we have. We actually did a fishing game this morning, so uh, we've been fishing this morning just to kind of tag along with y'all, and they've they've had a blast so far. So. Well, the smiles, and the giggles, <laughs> yes. oh, it's been awesome. So, and we're like I said, we're so thankful y'all are here. Appreciate what you guys do for everybody. Thank and you. you guys also help with veterans as well here. Yes, too, right? um, we just started that um, the house up the road. Um, houses a couple veterans and they're um, working their way back into the society and the community and then um, they're grooming our horses and working their way up to volunteer in the class so it's exciting it's, it's fun. a very special place like when I came in you just feel the energy like I got I got chills now <laughs> it's a very special place full of special people so if you guys are in the area or if you're looking for an organization to support that really means something this is the place yes. so guys appreciate you guys tuning in Fat Cat Brittany NPFL stop number two, right Patman Lake, here in Texarkana, Texas. Do red one. Try another one. Here we go. Do red one. Here we go. All right, Woo. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, it fell down. Do blue? Oh, my goodness. Hey there, Fisher World Woods Shaking. Fat Cat Newton coming at you from Texarkana, Texas, here for stop number two of the National Professional Fishing League, fishing right at Patman Lake. If you guys come here to fish, make sure you stop by Mio Mayo's Casey Cuisine. We just rolled out of there with our guts tight. Had that black and catfish, some collard greens, them boudin balls, all that good, good Cajun cooking, baby. Y'all in town, make sure you stop by Mio Mayo's. And tell them Fat Cat sent you, okay? <laughs> what is the the favorite here? What does everybody come here for? A lot of guys like catfish and fish. Oh yeah? It's dirty rice with the filet on top and the on top of that. Okay, so that's that's one of y'all's number ones. That's a big favorite. All right, let us try that the the catfish. Uh, I mean, probably the dinner. <laughs> you want to... right, thank you. Thank you. Have mercy. We go dig in or what, Bobby? Look at this boy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, son. I don't know what a lot of this stuff is, but this right here is corn with bacon in it. I'm all about that life. Collard greens, hush puppies, catfish, and looks like real chunky gravy. Ah, that's music to my nose. Ah, 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 ah. Blackened catfish. <laughs> Golly. It's hard to chew it because I'm smiling so much because it tastes so good. Flavor too, boy. Got a little kick on the back end. Mio Mayo's, Texarkana. Cold straight legit. You feel like you're in Louisiana. You feel like you're down there in a bayou.
Chris Heath here. Started the day in 10th place. Much slower day today for Chris so far. King's dead. <laughs> mm. Look at Nick Pravana, Zach. Started the day in third place. Really has caught some great quality fish this week. Every time he swung yesterday, Dudley. It seemed like it was over three pounds. A lot slower morning so far for Nick. I wonder if we could, I'm just curious to know more of the story if he started in a different area. I wonder, if, see if we can get the cameraman to ask him if he started in a different area or if he's repeating back over the same water. <coughs> Nick just slow and steady. what we've seen from Nick the first two days right there. Hopefully get his day turned back there around. Fish number one. First oh. fish for Nick. He's got, we know he's got two, but he's just in his mind he's feeling like. Just he just came up, up here earlier. On the way live tracker. We've seen him catch some uh, three and a half, three something. Good solid start. Of course, getting closer to that afternoon delight, that lunchtime hour, and we saw him do a lot of damage before we went off live yesterday at 2 p.m. Of course, today we run to 1 p.m. and then get the drive-through way in live stream at 3:30 p.m. TMPFL.com. look like he's switched back areas or something that he's definitely did not look he was banked up this morning on a hard bank line and we hadn't seen that all week and I and it looks you know of course a lot cleaner where he's at Seen in the last little bit a couple of key bites. Some better quality fish coming across the screen here in the last few minutes. Oh, it's not real late, it's about 5 16. Put the. That's what I've been using all week. Keith Carson, Jesse Millsaps, Nick Provanazak, and David Gaston. Four of our top five when they left the dock this morning, showdown Saturday. We're going to focus on these little islands. That's kind of loud. It was, uh, yesterday I had a few bites on them.
definitely been a a common language of islands this week. Oh, definitely islands uh, and points. You can get the for wind sure. These uh, also the bait. You know, bait can come from every direction. It's something that uh, when it's a big flat like that, they nest them a little bit. They have something. The bait got something to gravitate to. So you always got stuff. You know, running to those islands. Yesterday they were on them pretty good. Come on, big girl. There's one in here. I know a million boats been through here, but I know there's one in here. We love this quad box action, but a guy that we haven't seen a lot of action yeah, from this one. week, our winner from Event 1, John Hookup Soakup, and we have got some service with John right now. Come on. And take a look at the winner of our inaugural event, John Hookup Soakup. Pulling that brush pile with this. Started, started the day in ninth place. Turn that corner, and it's going to be all all we can to stay. Does it does it surprise you that he's Man, that win. shallow, being such a great, you know, off the bank fisherman? You know, talking to John and getting to know John the last few months, he he likes shallow water fishing just as well as he does offshore. But I think he's just with the bass tank, with his experience working on electronics there, like he's just gotten dialed on uh you know garmin live scope he's really focused in on offshore brush piles a lot in the last year or so but growing up in oklahoma he told me at the way in I, I said we were joking you know not really fitting his strengths he said man this fits my strengths more than than offshore fishing so wow he really likes to shallow water fish likes to throw a spinner bait likes to frog likes to flip definitely showing his versatility no doubt about it which as we talk about progressive angler of the year as the year goes on and we fish all these diverse fisheries that will help a guy like john out because he can truly do it all and i i really expect to see him down the stretch the season ends in his home state of oklahoma on a lake he knows very well grand lake fully expect to see john right there at the end of the year when we crown an angler of the year Can, that wind, man. <laughs> you can guarantee he will be a contender when we hit Oklahoma. No doubt about it. I probably definitely take, showing you know, his at least thirty percent of the field out. They don't like fishing this stuff. It does, man. It takes a lot more balance. It takes a lot more everything. You know what I mean? Like boat control experience. It's just not fun. It's it make it works you. Dude, there's a lot of times when this is the key to everything is getting in that wind. I'll do it for the rest of the day. We keep that bit look like that, you know. That was good. Interesting approach right there from hook up, soak up talked about going head first into this wind a lot of guys don't like flipping when you've got that shop the boat control is so important it wears on you mentally and physically fighting the wind trying to flip trying to make accurate pitches but he says he's targeting this type stuff because a lot of anglers avoid it so in a crowded situation a lot of pressure yeah, you know there are not weight. many secrets left out here on right patman yeah he's he's using that weight thing may not be he's using the uh, this wind to his advantage and basically to sum up in a nutshell of what he's saying is i'm going to fish uh areas less pressured he goes you know the he feels in his mind i think is what he's saying he feels in his mind that nobody not as or as many people have not went down this stretch you know he's going down a stretch of direct wind 
and you know to his mind he's hitting as virgin of a piece oh, of water oh. as you can expect for six days of fishing so uh that right there is a, is a chess game move that is very valuable when you come when you're looking at the end of the year standings he's already sitting on he's got a limit for 11 and a half pounds i think is where we have him at still hovering around that uh top 10 just outside of it and he's really just a bite or two away from you know bumping up that leaderboard quite a bit and potentially solidifying himself in that progressive AOY mm -hmm. lead leaving here. Of course, he's at the top of the standings right now with only one event fish, and he won that event. But there's a few guys that have something to say about that, like Keith Carson, who ended that first event in 13th place, who is on top of our leaderboard. Nick Bravanazak also top tended. Brian Hatfield had a great tournament there. So AOY standings going to look a little tight after Wright Patman heading into the Harris Chain for our third event, first week of June down in Florida. And after that event, Dudley, the AOI race will really start to shape up because you're halfway point there of the six event season. Yeah, for sure. You, you got tournament one and two, and you can maybe create a little bit bit of separation in the field but not really once day once tournament three comes around then you're you're going to start to see the separation of the men from the boys you That's know right and then you're gonna because you can you can go on a one or two tournament streak where you're doing well but angler of the year is about that consistency of every day these guys got basically um 18 days that they better be on their P's and Q's. That's right. It sounds simple, down. right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, point. so simple. Yeah, just keep your concentration up for 18 days, buddy. Eight, oh. eight to ten hours a day. Just, yeah. That's all we need. Yeah, and don't hiccup. Turkey, got a turkey in my boat. Yeah, yeah, no old orca. I just go from giant hookup soak up over to the man that thirty thousand dollars. They should have just gave it a tackle warehouse. David Gaston got home rods be on the front porch, you know, rod tubes and just. In the shade, guys. Oh. Look at that big shade line. I tell you, these are the hardest fighting fish I've ever seen in my life. I mean, a two pounder give you a run for your money. This ain't even a two pounder. That's the bad thing. That was that Judy set, though. I said a Judy snatch. My goodness. The Judy. I caught one yesterday. That one Lord have mercy. No doubt. Big old giant gauge wire hook. Looks like I got a piece of rebar stuck in his face. Let's see here what we got cooking. Oh, we might have a we might have a coal. Oh wow. So David sitting on the limit. Has not updated his way oh, live got tracker. I've that TH Marine. And I know you Thing know him bomber. very well. Oh, G4 like something, another. Like Let me get right here on your foot. If you don't mind, Mr. Cameraman. There she is right there. The G4 Soul System. I ain't sponsored by TH Marine, but I like this thing. The league gonna have a way in by TH Marine, the official fish care provider. So we appreciate Dave this using little, it. ain't him. Oh, he ain't the big. That fish ain't big. I gotta get him out of there. I mean, the ones I caught yesterday. Oh yeah, we have potentially. We made a call. 
Look at there. My smallest fish yesterday could have ate that one. Could have ate two of them, but had no problem. David casting over to Nick Pravonizak. Third place coming into today. Slow day so far. One fish in the boat. Good solid keeper to start today. Three and a half pounder. Just a little bit ago. He has found the wind, Keith Carson was talking about. Big one. <clears throat> yes. Mm. There's a four. Luke. <laughs> Luke. I'm telling you. He's a dangerous How's man. Spot working out. Good. I'm glad we should have just came up here sooner, but. Mm -hmm. That's a good one there. That's bigger than anything I caught I yesterday here. Ticket. You follow as well. Started slow and finished off the Well, there's three. We get three more to go though. Call that little one. Three fish. I said he was sitting on one. He's got three now. I told you. Eat. Thank you, Lord. We missed fish right too. Bites. You update that weight life tracker. Just gotta keep getting the right bites. I mean, I just made that move and I've had one, two, three fish in about 20 minutes. You know, he's and I've been fishing for four hours down there, right hardly. I've had bites down there, but nothing like this. This is definitely a better area. There's another little island, island willow here. Luke, I, I gotta say, two, three and a half, Four pounder, another keeper in 20 minutes. Went to a new area, we talked about it earlier. I said, somebody's gotta have courage to just up and leave and go somewhere else in 20 minutes. Now, I'm not sure when he's due in today, but think about it, if he's a four, he's still got four hours to put together a, a good bag. A lot I'm, of time left. A lot of time. Showdown Saturday. Do what? Not even Lynn. I appreciate the offer.
Oh, no, that one's bigger. Wait, let's stop it here. Yep, number one's bigger. Okay, so let's check the other one. Let's check number two. He's bigger. Okay, good, so that's a Okay. So this one goes back in the water. So let me put these two back in. Wait a second, which one? One. Number five goes next. The two, three, four goes next. So I got one there. Good ones in there. I got five in there. This one goes back. Okay. Good deal. All right. Well. As I was just talking crap about this spot and how like seven million boats have hit it, I catch two fish like back to back cast. So made a little call. Let me fish a little bit harder. See if uh, see if uh, pick up another one. Hey. All right, we'll update the app. Two pounds, three ounces. All right, we're up to 14.6. Every little bit counts. He hit it, but he didn't hold on to it. Must be small. Trying to get you some more buddies in there.
I mean, just 14 times wrapped up in the tree. <laughs> it makes you wonder how can it actually wrap that many times. I mean, bad luck. I guess it just didn't fray my line. <laughs> Four and a half hours. Look, got a fresh beaver for y'all. You need to bite my cricket. Linda, my kids over here need a chaperone. <laughs> I had to go. I reckon I can get Linda to be the chaperone. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're getting rowdy in here. They need they need someone to put them in line. That's right. That's right. What's well, bad? These islands, like this right here. Like yesterday, I caught a six right here, and and I don't know why they're not. I mean, they they gotta still be, and they gotta be moving in and out of it. It's the same kind of places. This one, the wind hadn't trashed. So you know they're still here somewhere. Mm. Actually, the first day I caught a three, and the second day I caught a six off of it. So I mean, then to not even get a bite on that end. long might be might be a keeper it's not very heavy though oh, look at Joel. 14 willard jay willie trying to make that go 14 inches we got a limit Five. And Dudley, that's the sight we've seen a lot today. Mm -hmm. Now the hard part is, is some points of trying to figure out which one I'm going to call. Because they're all about the same size. Get a great tournament down to follow as well. Joel back to that spinner bait, the bling bling, Dudley, with the, the win. Bling. He started his day with, and then he saw him flip.
I think a lot of these anglers are, you, you see them, and you got to be this way uh, when you are fishing. <clears throat> We've seen them use different lures. Go, you know, as we fishing gets that. tough, you got to. We're on. We're on. Okay. You got to keep yourself honest. Well, well the uh, Brandon Parkins. Frog in action's picking Mr. up Perkins. just a touch. I just lost a good, good one. Um, that was my fault. I mean, I was, I was watching my frog but I, I didn't think it got it. I thought it missed it. And uh, it was coming toward me. By the time I realized it, it was too late. And I mean, I stuck it too. Um, but it already had me pinned. Um, you can't give these bass a second or they will wrap you. But I have culled twice in the last little bit, one flipping, one on a frog. And uh, had three blow-ups now, so I'm hoping this sunshine will put them tight on the cover and uh, see if we can catch a few. Dudley, I think it's time for a little bass tank breakdown and something that David Gaston mentioned earlier. Brandon Perkins talking about just losing one on a frog there. Talk about that shade line and what these guys are seeing now that they've got some sunshine around these willow trees and bushes. Shade is always going to make uh, your targets more um, predictable. And when you have this much cover in an in a area, you have to fish slow, methodically, especially when there's spawners in, in – in, especially a time of year when there's spawners. <clears throat> so we've heard mention of a lot of anglers talking about we want that sun up, we want that sun up. And basically, it's just pushing them in more predictable places. In the sh back into the shade, they're not going to stick as far out on a bush as they had been. They're going to tuck back in a little bit further, where possibly in the morning there could have been some just outside the bush, right on the inside. You never know where your bite's coming from. We've already seen David Gaston come in with a couple good coals here lately. He just laid mention to a big one that he just lost. So, at on par, the the afternoon delight is happening. Um, you know, he's he's the only one that we've seen uh, this week that we've had cameras on with any any remotely topwater bite going on. But there are a lot of people in the field throwing them. I, I talked to a bunch of them yesterday. So, yes, the lure of choice for him in predictable places is the. Uh, the the frog now i gotta say he's throwing a frog and david is throwing a swim jig it's the same fish right a, a lot of the you know the fish that bit his frog is probably the same fish that would bite the swim jig i i, I don't i can't really sit here and be dogmatic on it but the point is no matter your choice of weapon it is putting them in predictable places and as long as he can keep that frog and i and for any of you v viewers that wasn't with us yesterday, he mentioned something, Luke, that I still just am puzzled about, but it, I will give it a try. He actually put tungsten in his frog. Tung right? Tungsten beads to and, give it a little weight. And his reasoning was he, he could skip it further back into the trees. And I never thought about adding weight to a frog because a frog is something that you uh, – you know, it, it's known for float. You don't want it to sink. You don't want water to get inside of your frog. And yet he's like, no, sir, I, I'm adding weight to my frog so I can skip it back in there further. So, And he added a lot of weight to his fully loaded live well, climbed him up the leaderboard. And we're going to take a look right now at our unofficial leaderboard coming in. All these guys logging in their catches on the Way Live Tracker that you can find on tmpfl.com. Look at that Texas – Mural right there. Beautiful Texarkana. Unofficial leaderboard right now. Lots of shakeups again. Something we've seen every single day. But right now, Keith Carson, still the man to beat on top with a big lead. It's Sheldon Collins. Huge jump today into that second place spot. Mark Schilling with one of our biggest stringers of the day, 18-6 unofficially right now, has him in third place. Mark, who made a huge comeback at Ufala to make our top ten. But 
We have someone visiting the top ten, Dudley, that we got to cover a lot the first two days. Donnie O'Neill. Ah, Donnie. Had, had, had a slow day yesterday, but 17 pounds, two ounces unofficially. Has him in fourth place. Nick Provodizak, of course, we have seen three quality fish from him so far. Every time he swings, it seems to be a quality fish. Eight pounds, ten ounces with three. William Fletcher, one of our other big movers of the day. And Dudley, seventh place. Would you look at that? Michael, Michael Yoder, Yoder, local favorite, who you've said all week will end up in our top ten. Mm-hmm. May not give it a run for the win because he kind of stubbed his toe day one. If catching an 18-pound stringer or stubbing your toe, but here at Wright Patman, it was this week. Brian Hatfield, Shane Cole, and Cody Ryan Graney rounding out our top ten right now unofficially. And, of course, everything will be unofficial until 3.30 p.m. when that drive through weigh-in starts at the Texarkana Convention Center, and each angler brings these big bass to Al McCullough. On stage, and Al has screamed about so many big bass. He is very hoarse. William Fletcher has hit kind of a stopping sign. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Angler's still building on his limit, though. Mm Mm-hmm. Still hoping to get that green light, <laughs> Nick Gravonizac, mm-hmm. right here. Sitting on three bass. Good gosh. Okay. Look at this, Luke. He has room to grow. Let's just say he catches one seven pounder. He went well. He he takes the lead. He's right there. W- takes the lead. Absolutely. Y- you see what I'm saying? It's very close. He's got room to grow. Big one. I mean, uh, giant. Uh-oh. Yes, he came out. This will be a big bite challenge, big bass. Man, the grab behind the gap makes me scared. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not exact. Every time he swings, dang like quality. I, that's going to shake up. Go. We just looked at the unofficial leaderboard, but that's certainly going to shake it up once he <laughs> enters this in the way live tracker. That Great could, fish. That could not have been He's scripted any better. So, a little over, a little over. Four. Wow. Yes. Keith, if you can hear me, <laughs> which he can't. <laughs> better tighten up. <laughs> but if you could hear me right now, you would be shaking That's a little two, bit four right pounders now. Out of that bush. Mm. Two four pounders out of the same stretch of cover. Nick Bravana, Zach. We just need, what, two more baits? There we go. Put that in my phone. Two more baits down up here. We got four hours, right? Yeah, four hours. Four hours of fishing time left, Dudley. Of course, bites. we're entering our last hour of live coverage here, but you've got to think. I, I, I know we, we like to think big. We like to think big bat challenge, big bass. Oh, if he catches a seven-pounder, if he catches – just truly a couple five pounders because we've seen some of his a couple five pounders could get him really close to keith carson no he just said he was gonna um register that in wow now it's nick registers it we're gonna go to brandon perkins mr mr frog it's been our frog and hero for the last couple days Now is a little confused. Was that Nick's fifth, Luke? Fourth fish. Fourth. For Nick. Fourth oh, fish for Nick. I got you. A lot of room to grow. I was thinking that was number five. Uh oh. Brandon Perkins hooked up. So he's made a couple smaller coals this afternoon so far. Dang, Nick. I mean, Nick. And if I remember right, one of his four is like a two-pounder, right? Absolutely. Right now we have Brandon unofficially at 13 pounds. Limit for nine pounds. Man, to maintain that top ten pace, you've just got to catch them. 
Like you've got to have a four or five pounder in the boat to just get that weight up there. And a look at our leader, Keith Carson. That might call. Keith, of course, weighed 25 pounds the first day. Not sure if we were live that whole time after that. Something that's just kind of weird with the headset. It is fat though. Ooh, baby, I like that. It is fat. Let's weigh it. Let's just see. Oops. Let's mess around. Not like real this. sure what happened there. How do I zero? Keith zero. looks like he's getting ready to make another coal. Two, three, four. So I think that's bigger than um, the other one. I'll put him on the float. Keith Carson live, right, Patman? Just as we it saw Nick Provana, Zach, maybe, maybe make it a race. Keith's like, yeah, it's coal again. It's just like watching a boxing Number match. Four is a right. good one. Of course, There's Keith estimating two. he has 14 pounds, six ounces. And number one. If that's his smallest, I'm not might, so sure. I don't know. Deadly. Might not do anything. And then number four, yeah, number four is like a three. If this is a two, three, four, number four is a three. Okay, so let's see. This is the one that I just caught, the fat one right here. Oh, nope, that one's bigger. Wait, let's stop it here. Yep, number one's bigger. Okay, so let's check the other one. Let's check number two. He's bigger. Okay, good, so that's a Okay. So this one goes back in the water. So let me put these two back in. Wait a second, which one? One. Mm. Looks like we got some David Gaston like action right there. here. And on there, swing me off the boat. Speaking of action, those legs, man, look at that. Those pink shorts. Didn't take David for a pink short guy. I heard them other guys time, in here. They just go in and start teach their own. Fish something, and they'll crank up an idol. Could have been David on the road. Oh, He's the fat cat I was right talking about earlier. <laughs> I mean, there's some current gushing out of right here. I mean, it is really ripping. All them duck weeds piled up. You think you'd get a bite out of it? That ain't the case. I mean, it's so random. The thing you do is fish the same stuff, fish the same stuff, come back, and you'll catch fish. I mean, fishing around people here is, is no big deal because people everywhere. No matter if you're in a little spot like this or if you're out in the middle of the lake with everybody. Just go down the bank. The thing you do is put your trolling motor down and fish. You can't run around and waste time. I mean, unless you're hitting individual stuff and you got something figured out. I do not. I just need one good bite. I caught me a five pounder right here the other day. One of these islands. Oh my goodness. I hope that was a carp took off and not a bass. Man, I hope that was a carp. Oh, that was a big one. Dang gum it. You can't have nothing. Oh. I spooked him out of there. Great bite. Did you see that mm -hmm. bull? Just missed it. I caught a five pounder right here yesterday. I mean, right here. You know, one thing I noticed right there, they Either didn't I slow caught, down, didn't throw back, the, just probably the buck keeps probably rolling. On bed. Probably come back in a few minutes.
It's almost sound like his rod's got to ride away. <laughs> Not the lure. <laughs> the rod. David Gaston, one of our young anglers. When they pulled the picture down like he really wanted it. Oh, you're right there, you heifer. You got to bite something. Now we're going to let David see if he can track this fish back down in those pink shorts. I guess we're going to so. take a look over at Jay Willie Joel Willard, Minnesota angler. Start today in 11th place. Spinner bait still. Jay Willie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're looking for a showdown. One of the right ones. What does that give Jay? Jay Will. He's showing he has four for 410, but I think he's not updating the way live out. Yeah. Or was that was that number five though? Let's see. All right, as Jay Willie's trying to figure out who to call and what is going on there. We are going to take a look at our fine sponsors, MPFL, and we will be back as we enter the last 45 minutes of live coverage on Showdown Saturday from Wright Hatman Lake. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. <laughs> Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. Like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. Yeah, I doubt that exists. The bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, you your trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Yep. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League, and I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFO. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started, and now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco-free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it, and what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. Fullyloadedchew.com, check it out. All right, folks, here we are. We're in the back of Elliott Creek here on Wright Patman Lake, Texarkana with Mark Schilling. He's doing some weird stuff, man, when it comes to Texas big bass fishing. He's got about 18, 19 pounds in the bag. He's had a crazy morning. He said he tried out to start flipping. He's been flipping for most of the tournament on and off. He's like, but he's losing a lot of fish when he's flipping. A lot of them, so what do he do? 
picked up that spinner rod. He's got 20, 20 pound braid with a 20 pound fluoro leader, though on a Cinco with some kind of a special Hibusa rig that's really good for what he's doing. And what he's looking for, he's looking for low wind. He's looking for shallow water near deep water. And he's skipping that Cinco way up in that son of a gun. I mean, way up in the guts. He's hooked on, he's got a four pound and a five pounder both fishing this way. He said, Fishing here on right Patton is kind of that like combat fishing. He said, because you got to get your lure way back in that nasty, gnarly stuff. And then that's the easy part. The hard part is getting them out. He had one stuck earlier on this spinning rod setup. He had got it out of the thick stuff and right to the edge. And we talked about this on the round table the other night, Mark and I did, about how gnarly and those sticks and the twigs and the branches don't break. So his line got wrapped around and the fish's peg just wallowing around he was able to lean over and get that fish and get it in the boat some days it all comes together and i think that day is today for mark Schilling. he's got a good chance of making some moves i said what do you need to win he said i don't know 30 pounds i said you think you can i said you think you can do it he's like well i did it in practice i think i can do it again now he said he's just right now he's kind of fishing new water he's letting his honey holes rest a little bit he's going to ease on back up there but he goes stealth mode when he came here during practice, he said these trees had a foot, two foot of water. When we come through here now, we're kicking up mud. It's it's a different body of water. It's 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 skinny water back here. Oh, they're in here though. Watching. Talking to Mark, it seemed like one of the only things that was really affecting his fishing is just the water level. And I think the guys that are fishing closer to the dam are going to be dealing more with the water level issue than the guys fishing upriver. Because it's obvious the water is falling out down here. I just do a little flipping. He said this morning he did catch two on a spinnerbait fishing in windblown points. But he said they were getting beat up and everybody was out there. So he came back here because he had a good practice back here. And apparently it's working out for him. He's thinking. What are you thinking, man? Talk to us. What are you thinking? He said the water's dropped so much. What are you going to do about it? And why are we going to go back up there? What's different about going back up there than fishing? Yes. So he said, it's, so he said he about two, two and a half water up there. Gotcha. All right. He wants to go back up here. Like I said, he, what she told me earlier, there's a spot up here. It's got skinny water. Oh, it's got skinny water, but it's near deep water. And the key, it's out of the wind. Beans is out of the wind, it sets up so much better for what he's doing. Because when he's skipping that, it's so easy for that braid or that floral to get wrapped around that twig, and that's a wrap. So less wind, more accurate. And like something he said several times since we've been with him, you've got to fish clean. It's so thick, it's so nasty. That's what he talks about, the combat fishing. You have to fish clean. If you don't fish clean, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Come on, J.M. Steele. Cross him eyes. Mark Schilling's all about snapping necks and cashing checks, kind of like David Dully and Luke Duncan in the studio getting that easy money, just sitting on their hinds in that AC doing nothing. So we're going to go back to you guys and give you something to do while I watch Mark Schilling jack jaws. Back to you boys. Thank you, Fat Cat, for you know, letting the world that we make the easy money in here in the studio and you're out there doing the hard work.
covering these anglers. And I, I've got to be honest, there are days that I'm jealous of Fat Cat out there catching a tan, talking to all of our anglers in person. But then days like yesterday when that weather got a little dicey, I'm good right here in the chair next to you, Double D. I, I will agree with you. Even though I had to hold your hand most of the day yesterday because <laughs> of stage fright, but, you know, you're getting Habits. better with it. You're you're getting better. It happens. Back over to Nick Provanasek. <laughs> Nick, who has a legitimate chance of running down Keith Carson. Four in the box, four good fish. Which gives a lot of room to grow. That's right. And I'm thinking one of those four is like a two-ish yes. pounder. He, he's sitting on four. Let's give him 20 pounds of the day. If he had 20 pounds of the day... Dang. Two more four-pounders. I know it sounds, you know, simple. But two more four-pounders, we got a ball game, brother. I'm talking within ounces. And Nick has done that all week. Yes. When he swings the bat. Two more of the famous Wright Patman four-pounders. And it just got very interesting. Slow day for most of our leaders. Keith Carson able to put together a solid limit, unofficially 14 pounds, but not what we came to expect from Keith. So far, the first two days here at Wright Patman, the NPFL presented by Progressive. He did most of his damage in the first half of the day on day one, the same day two. And we saw Nick yesterday before we went off of live at 2 p.m. start to really pile on the weight. After we went off the air, you could see on that way live leaderboard just lots of shots fired from most of the field. Nick was certainly one of them. Enter today in third place. And then we have the crappie <laughs> barge. I wonder if Kevin Rogers is with them, the crappie king. Do you think? He's probably wishing he was on there with them. Crappie for king, sure. Kevin Rogers, one of our NPFL anglers. And Jimmy Millsaps drawing in a crowd. Jesse Millsaps, not Jimmy. Are you getting a little tired there, Luke? I'm not. I know Jesse's uncle, Jimmy Millsaps, fish tournaments against him for a long time, and I have called him Jimmy about 40 times this year, and I'd like to apologize for that. <laughs> Jesse comes from a great fishing family in Georgia, and Jimmy was. Interesting with Nick and, and Keith. Keith is at the top of the leaderboard. And you have Nick, of course, chasing him down within one fish of it, right? He's only sitting on four. Interesting to see the passion of both of them talking about how important that weight was. Keith is like, it's got one ounce, and it does this, and it's I, this is the deal. Yet, you look at Nick, 5'16". Y'all wearing them out? That's right. A far cry from one ounce. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so interesting Must be like about the bass fishing. fishing cause it ain't much better either. No. <laughs> <laughs> Man, just salt in the wound right there. Well, I was in second going into yesterday, into today, but it ain't looking so good now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Georgia. Good luck to you guys. I like think that lady you. was like, why aren't you in second anymore? <laughs> no. <laughs> lady clearly not watching MPFL Live, or she would have known oh. where Jesse Millsaps was. That was a burn. It really was. It was a subtle burn. <laughs>
you ain't doing no good. <laughs> Hell, buddy, you better <laughs> tighten it up. <laughs> Maybe that'll get Jesse in gear there. But like, don't Karen you think on it's the pontoon. <laughs> Karen and her husband Todd on the pontoon. <laughs> Back over to Robbie Frazier. Don't you think it's interesting, though, a 5 sixteenths weight versus a Definitely. one Definitely. And I think it speaks to how huge confidence is in bass fishing, and maybe we all make it too complicated, right? Uh, is it more about area than, than technique sometimes? And that's what live does for know, us, man. That's like... what it does. And John Hookup, soak up being joined by another party barge. Look at this. How you doing? Was crappie biting for you? No, they're not behaving? No. They're a lot like women, you know that? Like, uh, they do what they want. <laughs> oh, Those deeper bushes. I've been I've caught a couple I've caught one today, caught a couple during the tournament on this flipping, you know. Dunk. But uh you definitely got some big ones in here though. Seeing them on the graph, seeing them in person, they're big. That, that will help. Oh! That will help. Not big, but he'll help. The tune bringing hook up. Some you good like that, luck. buddy? <laughs> his... Did you get to see that fish catch? Did you get to see it? Cool. Good luck, guys. Sure did. He's been cold before. John out here just fine. pleasing the fans. Whoever cold that one. Boot game a strong. I do. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. Golly. Maybe we can get. Got that John hook up soak up laugh back. So we're about to finally mm -hmm. here on Showdown Saturday. The giggle the is pounder. alive and well. But of course, the two, but John, our winner, Lake you Fall. Right now, and we've had such a bad day. I've intentionally waited until the end, let the heat on these get up on these fish, these shallow water areas. It's a decent coal, you know what I mean? One pound coal. If every time you cold, cold one pound, puts us in that 12 zone. Puts us in that 12 zone. Golly, he was aggressive too. That's, that's a good sign. I haven't caught one fish in the bushes yet in here. Not one. So it kind of really actually excites me. Gets me looking forward to what, what could happen. We got four hours, dude. Hang on a second, I'm gonna hit my lens here because I got some water on it. From the winner at Lake Eufaula in our first event over to the leader of the second event as the hours wear on here. Showdown Saturday, Keith Carson still holding on to that first place spot. Got a swim jig in his hand or a bladed uh, something. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell if it's got a little blade in front of it is what I'm a mentioned in two. Dang it, there's nothing back there. Starting to see some of the frustration in Keith a little bit, maybe.
Let's see. Some of that close combat fishing you, right there. What do you think is going on in his head right now? Do you think he's like, uh, maybe I might win this tournament, or do you think he's relaxed and – I mean, do you think he knows deep down inside I've won this tournament? He's pretty calm. Yeah, he's okay. calm, but I, I think that he had a goal in mind. He seems like that guy, he's, he's got a plan. And so I think well, the fact down that this he's not on 18 here, pounds um, yet. Just lost a couple good a ones on Chatter. I had, had one that was four or five come off. And then I had another one knock slack in my line. And I just didn't, didn't connect with them. I think it's maybe the water's a little bit too dirty. They're not quite seeing it or getting it, or I'm not exactly sure. Um, so I'm going back to flipping. You know, I've been been connecting with the fish a lot better with the flipping fish, and just still just looking for right now. I'm, I'm really just looking for like a four pounder. Like I'd feel with the way the day's going, one four pounder, I'd feel pretty dang good. Um, you know, it's uh, it's really slow. Getting a lot of bites, just not the right bites. I should be able to get one off this tree here. And if I do, then I need to fish faster. Keith not talking to us as much today, Dudley, as he has been the last couple of days. Says he feels like he needs one four pounder. So I, I feel like I guess this is it's the demon back. hour a little bit. Like three bites the in the demon. back yesterday. Getting in his head a little bit. The demon hour. It's going slow going. Of course, the anglers have zero clue what the other anglers have unless they run into them on the water and have Come a conversation, on. but aren't allowed to check the way live tracker like you guys can. Not the right kind. I hear some. That is not the right species. Jay Willie. White bass. Catching Mr. Sh Hybrid Bass there. Mm -hmm. This is the time of year those 
those things start to get shallow also. Them catfish. God the heck. <laughs> Derek Blake in the multi species well, hour. You don't your pond. What is <laughs> this? Be a good <laughs> little shout out, Dudley. A good stalker uh -oh. for that pond you just made. <laughs> God, it's about Lake Teresa. Dumped it. There in Tennessee, Dudley. A dang catfish. Do you, do you have much in Lake Teresa? You know, yet? you ain't doing something right when you're catching we, catfish. Uh, Yeah, we uh, got a few bluegill in there. Some shad, Three pounder away from getting a dang check from catching bass. catfish. Are you going to get them out of Pickwick, Wheeler? Oh, stock them. Where are you getting them out from? Out of a hatchery, son. Some of them hybrids. Oh, F1s. Getting some F1s. Yeah. Lake Teresa will be fully stocked for the Dudley family to come down in about three years. There you go. Catch some six pounder. I have. think I'd have to start slipping some of them in there from Pickwick. Yeah. Back to Carson. My gosh. Did you see that? This is what I've been losing. I keep losing them. Like they, they want to eat the damn chatter, but not getting it. I mean, that's a, that's a quality fish right there. Gosh, ate it with like five feet of line out right off the trolling motor. Man, I just. Keep Carson alive. I don't know. You, you know. Oops, sorry, bud. There we go. Him back. That's number five. He goes back. And that's a good call. You can hear it in his <laughs> yeah, voice, Luke. I'm just. Mm, that was so that was a breath of fresh air right there for uh, Keith Carson. That number you know one that. In there. That one. That one's pretty good, yeah. Number four, that's like a upper two or three. So number one, so, okay. That fish is definitely a three pounder. I almost didn't come back here. I was gonna turn around back there. I've been coming to the backs of the pockets, not getting anything. Chatterbait. Just keep moving, yes. It's crazy. Well, I'll update. Okay. So we'll say that one's a three pounder. It's got me about 15.3 now. Man, I need like seven. It's, I don't know what to do. Like, do I just keep throwing this and just keep missing them? Um, or, or, or maybe catch one? But I had three big bites in the last 15 minutes and only caught one. The other one I saw, I turned them sideways and it was bigger than that. It's a tough call. I tried throwing the black and blue chatter and uh, I don't know, they won't even touch it. They don't even want that one. It's like, I guess because this Looks like a crappie and a shad and stuff like that. Maybe it's a water clarity issue why they can't quite find it. Why they're slapping at it. I don't know. Man, am I glad I caught that one though. Gosh, that would be demoralizing to lose a third good fish like that. He ate it right here at my feet. Come on, give me a big one. Give me a giant, please. Today I'm just doing a straight retrieve. Um, I, would, I normally pump it, but I, f I feel like you know they've been knocking. Sl oh crap! That was a bad cast. They've been knocking, slapping it with just a straight retrieve. So 
Let's hope I can hook up to them better. Well, Double D, we are winding down, and I think, Keith, that is, like I said, a lot of weight off his shoulders with that fish. That was that was one he's been waiting on. Not quite the four-pounder he was looking for, but only 15 minutes left in our live coverage. But I'd like to remind everybody there's a lot of fishing time left, so a lot of things can happen here on Wright Patman. But do you think he feels better now? It, you, it, you could hear it in his voice. It was truly – it was truly, you heard the relaxation in his voice. He's had that intensity, you know, the unsureness of, you know, what he what he had in his live well. Would it be enough for out of, without a shadow of a doubt? He's like, that did it. You know, Absolutely. He, he feels he could actually like, take a breath. Yeah, I, I, I think anything beyond this, I feel he feels his bonus. We're going to take a breath right now. One more commercial break and back with more MPFL Live from Wright Patman. Omega products are built by fishermen for fishermen. We set out to build the best vibrating jig on the market. The blending of high-end components, a detailed assembly process, and a burning desire to achieve perfection are the pillars of the Rapture bait. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. The Rapture was no different. Countless hours of testing and retesting. The result, a vibrating jig that hunts, hooks, and catches bass like no other. All right, guys, no insurance talk on beach day. I'm down. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my RV, but insuring it is such a hassle. Same with my boat. The insurance bills are through the roof. Be cool. I wish I could group my insurance stuff. <clears throat> like the house, the car, the RV. Like a cluster, an insurance cluster. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that exists. It's a bundle! It's a bundle and it saves you money! Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive and I couldn't help it over here. Super fun beach day, everybody. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Blue Water by TH Marine. Brad Fuller with the National Pro Fishing League. And I'm super excited to talk to you about a new product that I just discovered through a partnership for the MPFL. It's gonna benefit you. I've been a dipper of chewing tobacco for over 20 years. I have quit, started, and quit, and started. And now I've found a product where I don't have to quit. Let me introduce you to Fully Loaded. This product is food grade quality, but it's not tobacco. That means the nicotine that's in this is not from tobacco. It's actually called TFN, it's tobacco free nicotine. So you still get nicotine, but it's not from tobacco. Guys, I've tried a lot of these brands and things like this before. This is as close and as real to real tobacco as you're gonna get. You get all the benefits of it. And what I like about it, they have great flavors, they have pouches, they have straight, they have long cut, and it actually dips like real dip. It comes in fully loaded, half loaded, and then the nicotine free. So you, you can walk yourself back and walk away from the nicotine. I love it, you're gonna love it. I want you to check them out at fullyloadedchew.com. Listen, go to the website. You can buy a can for a dollar to try it. Fullyloadedchew.com, check it out. Welcome back to the city of Texarkana, Texas, and our MPFL Live studio here at the Convention Center. And Double D, it's been a heck of a day so far. Very, very interesting day, of course. Looked at the field, struggling quite a bit. You've watched some people make the right adjustments. But overall, it's still been a productive day, but... You know, the man of the, the, the week has been Keith Carson. No doubt about it. But we have seen today some shakeup in this top ten that left the dock in the top ten this morning. 
a whole new unofficial leaderboard. We're going to take a look at that right now. Here from Wright Patman, the MPFL, presented by Progressive Insurance and Keith Carson, like you said, Dudley, still holding on to that top spot, but you've got Nick Pravonizak right still there. Still got a lot of room to grow. Still room to grow, but one of the biggest movers and shakers of the day, Sheldon Collings in third place, Mark Schilling, Cody Ryan Graney moving up the board to fifth place, local favorite coming into this event, Michael Yoder, who you predicted would end up in our top ten unofficially right now, sixth place, Donnie O'Neill, who we've watched set the hook a lot this week on live, in seventh place, David Gaston, John Hookup Sokup, and William Fletcher, who's made a charge today, rounding out our unofficial top ten. And so funny to see David Gaston and John Sokup in our top ten because they finished one and two that's, right there at Ufala. That's so right. So they're in the hunt right now for the Progressive Angler of the Year, Dudley, which will start getting thick as we head into Florida, Leesburg, Florida, that next event. Of course, these standings after our first event. So that is actually the place the anglers finished in the event down at Ufala. John Sukup, of course, leading that. David Gaston, Landon Tucker, Nick Pravonizak in third. Luis Fernandez, Joe Discerny, Chance Woodard, Mark Schilling, Brandon Perkins, and Jesse Millsaps. These anglers get points for their finishes, obviously. So the higher you finish, the more points you get. So today, looking at that, looking at our unofficial top ten, not a lot going to change at the top of that. John Hookup Sokup's going to be right there. Keith Carson's going to be right there. David Gaston's going to be right there. Nick Bravonizak. It's going to be an interesting race that will start to heat up going into the Harris Chain down in Leesburg, Florida. Absolutely. Just like I said, in this, in the style that uh, National Professional Fishing League is doing, they're giving these anglers three days of tournament coverage and i've always said the cream of the crops coming to the top and obviously the angler of the year will be the cream of the crop but allowing three days to these anglers to either fall or to gain more angler of the year points i mean some people would probably want it to end after two (laughs) days but these guys are not letting off of the throttle they are throttling as hard as they can and yes by the time we get to our next event it's going to be even tighter Absolutely, Leesburg is going to be amazing. Let's take a look back at Wright Patman today with some highlights presented by Progressive. It's been a fun day here in the city of Texarkana, Wright Patman Lake. I seen that fish eat it. Jesse Millsaps, another one of our anglers that finished in the top ten down at Lake Eufaula. Started the day in second place. A lot tougher day for Jesse. Today, swim jig bite went away from him a little bit, though. Yes, yes, it did. It, it The water got muddier. Uh, the, we oh, had yeah, two inches got. of rain last night. Swim jig, you need that clarity to happen just a little bit. And our boy Nick, Nick with the consistency of three and four pounders. It seems like he's got a, a weigh scale on his thing. It says, I'm only setting the hook unless you're three to four pounds. Discriminating but, against yeah. the smaller bass yes. this week, Nick Provonizak. But he has been hammering down on them all week Dude. long, and just he's watching the consistency of him has yes. been a treat. No. Uh, he's going to be an angler of the year in, in the angler of the year race, just as well as everybody else we mentioned. If he were to stay in second place, Dudley, I think he will be our leader leaving this event. It'll be close. True that. I It'll think he be will close. be. With a fourth place and a Here second place, he's going to be right Here we there. Go. And, of course, Damn. the man of the week, yes. Keith Carson, just yes. showing us how it's done. Thank Very you. Very consistent with high bank uh, uh, choices of cover. The high bank is uh, hard bank line is always yes. within sight of him. But just his accuracy on it's pitching, really knowing his style, just, fishing his style, being able to adjust. Oh. And we got David Gadsden, the swim jig master, who is putting it on. Chris Heath today, who was flipping a jig. We saw a lot of anglers flipping soft plastics this week, but Chris sticking with that greenfish tackle jig. Back to Keith Carson. Keith Carson. Our last fish we saw live. Falling the jig, falling out of his mouth right as he lipped it. <gasps> but I think that fish, he just felt it. One of the coolest clips of the day. Right. Broken line. Jay Willie springing into action. That Some was live action from Brandon, Brandon Perkins. Right. 
And Sheldon. Sheldon just rocking it up that leaderboard today. He got zoned in yesterday and stayed in the zone today. Brandon Perkins, who will be one of our favorites going into Pickwick Lake in July, is second top 10. This is here it. at Wright Pavin, great young angler. He is, hasn't caught, caught the quality today. No, but he probably has caught the most of the day that, I, that, that we've had cameras on, of course. But okay. Okay. Keith Carson Guys took three early this morning. There he is again with another fish. That'll work. The bling bling with Jay Willie today. He's been right switch. steady with the bling today. Brandon Perkins. Spinner bait. More bling bling. And of course, he's mixed in the frog. Which made you a big fan <laughs> yesterday. Yes, I enjoyed watching Giant that frog bite. Again, like I said, he has been a very consistent with bites today. Again, consistent with bites today. Okay. okay. Now it took three flips. It says, yeah. Familiar setup with Brandon Perkins swinging a lot of fish in today. Got him. Been a great <laughs> day here at Wright Patman, the National Professional mighty. Fishing League, presented by Progressive. Good stuff there, brought to you by Progressive. We always appreciate our fine sponsors here on the MPFL, and we appreciate you, each and every one of you that have tuned in to listening to the ramblings of the <laughs> Mad Men here, myself, Luke Duncan, and David Dudley, and our man, Fat Cat on the Water, who, who did some hard work today. Fat Cat was all over the place getting us the good stuff, got on Sheldon Collins, got on Mark Schilling, got us the goods to help us connect the dots because, like he said, we are getting the easy money. We're in the big comfortable chairs here in the studio. Uh, but everything that we've shown you guys, unofficial, unofficial. Just keep that in mind until this drive through weigh-in, 3.30 p.m. here with Al McCullough at the convention center in Texarkana. And, Dudley, I, I mean, before we go off air, we don't have long here, will we see that nine-pound, four-ounce bass that I long for it's not look. It's not uh, looking it, good. But there's a lot of good. fishing time. Left. It, it is. We're we're on the one o'clock hour. These guys got three and a half more hours to go. A lot can change in that three and a half hours. But being honest, I think the the chance of the nine pounder, the eight pound, or maybe eight pounder being showing up is kind of for some reason has eluded us this they're week. Hiding out we somewhere. know they're in the lake, but a, a definite destination that I feel like I'm going to come back and visit anytime that I'm coming through this area. No this doubt lake about is it. loaded full of good fish, good quality, and it has given us a showdown of tournament catches today. Absolutely, and you're going to want to tune into that weigh in at 3:30 p.m. to see if those big fish do show up in the afternoon delight hours. I'm Luke Duncan. Thanks for tuning in to NPFL Live, and we will see you all in Leesburg, Florida. Nick Provodazak, there's the boom. 1814, 1814. From Jasper, Georgia, Jesse Millsap, there's the boom. 23 pounds, four ounces right there, your new leader, Jesse Millsap. Cody's got five in the bag today. 20 pounds, five ounces right there, just gonna put you just out of first place. Put your hands together, folks, right there. Josh hammered it up on day one. 19 pounds, two ounces, two day total of 40, 12,
a big one on the right path and your day one leader. Put your hands together for Keith Carson. He's got five in the bag today. 25 pounds on day one. I'm looking for 1702 to take the lead. 22 pounds, four ounces. Your new leader at 47 pounds, four ounces. Child. 